section one of walker's appeal this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org walker's appeal by david walker title page note and preamble walker's appeal in four articles together with a preamble to the colored citizens of the world but in particular and very expressly to those of the united states of america written in boston state of massachusetts september twenty eighth eighteen twenty nine third and last edition with additional notes corrections etc boston revised and published by david walker eighteen thirty note it will be recollected that i in the first edition of my appeal promised to demonstrate in the course of which viz in the course of my appeal to the satisfaction of the most incredulous mind that we colored people of these united states are the most wretched degraded and abject set of beings that ever lived since the world began down to the present day and that the white christians of america who hold us in slavery or more properly speaking pretenders to christianity treat us more cruel and barbarous than any heathen nation did any people whom it had subjected or reduced to the same condition that the americans who are notwithstanding looking for the millennial day have us all i ask is for a candid and careful perusal of this the third and last edition of my appeal where the world may see that we the blacks or colored people are treated more cruel by the white christians of america than devils themselves ever treated a set of men women and children on this earth it is expected that all colored men women and children footnote who are not too deceitful abject and servile to resist the cruelties and murders inflicted upon us by the white slaveholders our enemies by nature of every nation language and tongue under heaven will try to procure a copy of this appeal and read it or get some one to read it to them for it is designed more particularly for them let them remember that though our cruel oppressors and murderers may if possible treat us more cruel as pharaoh did the children of israel yet the god of the ethiopians has been pleased to hear our moans in consequence of oppression and the day of our redemption from abject wretchedness draweth near when we shall be enabled in the most extended sense of the word to stretch forth our hands to the lord our god but there must be a willingness on our part for god to do these things for us for we may be assured that he will not take us by the hairs of our head against our will and desire and drag us from our very mean low and abject condition preamble my dearly beloved brethren and fellow-citizens having travelled over a considerable portion of these united states and having in the course of my travels taken the most accurate observations of things as they exist the result of my observations has warranted the full and unshaken conviction that we colored people of these united states are the most degraded wretched and abject set of beings that ever lived since the world began and i pray god that none like us ever may live again until time shall be no more they tell us of the israelites in egypt the helots in sparta and of the roman slaves which last were made up from almost every nation under heaven whose sufferings under those ancient and heathen nations were in comparison with ours under this enlightened and christian nation no more than a cipher or in other words those heathen nations of antiquity had but little more among them than the name and form of slavery while wretchedness and endless miseries 
were reserved apparently in a phial to be poured out upon our fathers ourselves and our children by christian americans these positions i shall endeavor by the help of the lord to demonstrate in the course of this appeal to the satisfaction of the most incredulous mind and may god almighty who is the father of our lord jesus christ open your hearts to understand and believe the truth the causes my brethren which produce our wretchedness and miseries are so very numerous and aggravating that i believe the pen only of a josephus or a plutarch can well enumerate and explain them upon subjects then of such incomprehensible magnitude so impenetrable and so notorious i shall be obliged to omit a large class of and conduct myself with giving you an exposition of a few of those which do indeed rage to such an alarming pitch that they cannot but be a perpetual source of terror and dismay to every reflecting mind i am fully aware in making this appeal to my much afflicted and suffering brethren that i shall not only be assailed by those whose greatest earthly desires are to keep us in abject ignorance and wretchedness and who are of the firm conviction that heaven has designed us and our children to be slaves and beasts of burden to them and their children i say i do not only expect to be held up to the public as an ignorant impudent and restless disturber of the public peace by such avaricious creatures as well as a mover of insubordination and perhaps put in prison or to death for giving a superficial exposition of our miseries and exposing tyrants but i am persuaded that many of my brethren particularly those who are ignorantly in league with slaveholders or tyrants who acquire their daily bread by the blood and sweat of their more ignorant brethren and not a few of those too who are too ignorant to see an inch beyond their noses will rise up and call me cursed yea the jealous ones among us will perhaps use more abject subtlety by affirming that this work is not worth perusing that we are well situated and there is no use in trying to better our condition for we cannot i will ask one question here can our condition be any worse can it be more mean and abject if there are any changes will they not be for the better though they may appear for the worst at first can they get us any lower where can they get us they are afraid to treat us worse for they know well the day they do it they are gone but against all accusations which may or can be preferred against me i appeal to heaven for my motive in writing who knows that my object is if possible to awaken in the breasts of my afflicted degraded and slumbering brethren a spirit of inquiry and investigation respecting our miseries and wretchedness in this republican land of liberty the sources from which our miseries are derived and on which i shall comment i shall not combine in one but shall put them under distinct heads and expose them in their turn in doing which keeping truth on my side and not departing from the strictest rules of morality i shall endeavour to penetrate search out and lay them open for your inspection if you cannot or will not profit by them i shall have done my duty to you my country and my god and as the inhuman system of slavery is the source from which most of our miseries proceed i shall begin with the curse to nations which has spread terror and devastation through so many nations of antiquity and which is raging to such a pitch at the present day in spain and in portugal it had one tug in england in france and in the united states of america yet the inhabitants thereof do not learn wisdom and erase it entirely from their dwellings and from all with whom they have to do the fact is the labour of slaves comes so cheap to the avaricious usurpers and is as they think of such great utility to the country where it exists that those who are actuated by sordid avarice only overlook the evils which will as sure as the lord lives follow after the good in fact they are so happy to keep in ignorance and degradation and to receive the homage and the labour of the slaves they forget that god rules in the armies of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth 
having his ears continually open to the cries tears and groans of his oppressed people and being a just and holy being will at one day appear fully in behalf of the oppressed and arrest the progress of the avaricious oppressors for although the destruction of the oppressors god may not effect by the oppressed yet the lord our god will bring other destructions upon them for not unfrequently will he cause them to rise up one against another to be split and divided and to oppress each other and sometimes to open hostilities with sword in hand some may ask what is the matter with this united and happy people some say it is the cause of political usurpers tyrants oppressors etc but has not the lord an oppressed and suffering people among them does the lord condescend to hear their cries and see their tears in consequence of oppression will he let the oppressors rest comfortably and happy always will he not cause the very children of the oppressors to rise up against them and oft-times put them to death god works in many ways his wonders to perform i will not here speak of the destructions which the lord brought upon egypt in consequence of the oppression and consequent groans of the oppressed of the hundreds and thousands of egyptians whom god hurled into the red sea for afflicting his people in their land of the lord's suffering people in sparta or lacedaemon the land of the truly famous lycurgus nor have i time to comment upon the cause which produced the fierceness with which scylla usurped the title and absolutely acted as dictator of the roman people the conspiracy of catiline the conspiracy against the murder of caesar in the senate house the spirit with which mark antony made himself master of the commonwealth his associating octavius and lipidus with himself in power they are dividing the provinces of rome among themselves their attack and defeat on the plains of philippi of the last defenders of their liberty brutus and cassius the tyranny of tiberius and from him to the final overthrow of constantinople by the turkish sultan mohammed the second a d fourteen fifty three i say i shall not take up time to speak of the causes which produce so much wretchedness and massacre among those heathen nations for i am aware that you know too well that god is just as well as merciful i shall call your attention a few moments to that christian nation the spaniards while i shall leave almost unnoticed that avaricious and cruel people the portuguese among whom all true-hearted christians and lovers of jesus christ must evidently see the judgments of god displayed to show the judgments of god upon the spaniards i shall occupy but a little time leaving a plenty of room for the candid and unprejudiced to reflect all persons who are acquainted with history and particularly the bible who are not blinded by the god of this world and are not actuated solely by avarice who are able to lay aside prejudice long enough to view candidly and impartially things as they were are and probably will be who are willing to admit that god made man to serve him alone and that man should have no other lord or lords but himself that god almighty is the sole proprietor or master of the whole human family and will not on any consideration admit of a colleague being unwilling to divide his glory with another and who can dispense with prejudice long enough to admit that we are men notwithstanding our improminent noses and woolly heads and believe that we feel for our fathers mothers wives and children as well as the whites do for theirs i say all who are permitted to see and believe these things can easily recognize the judgments of god among the spaniards though others may lay the cause of the fierceness with which they cut each other's throats to some of the circumstance yet they who believe that god is a god of justice will believe that slavery is the principal cause while the spaniards are running about upon the field of battle cutting each other's throats has not the lord an afflicted and suffering people in the midst of them whose cries and groans in consequence of oppression are continually pouring into the ears of the god of justice would they not cease to cut each other's throats if they could but how can they the very support which they draw from government to aid them in perpetuating such enormities does it not arise in a great degree from the wretched victims of oppression among them and yet they are calling for peace peace will any peace be given unto them their destruction may indeed be procrastinated a while but can it continue long while they are oppressing the lord's people 
has he not the hearts of all men in his hand will he suffer one part of his creatures to go on oppressing another like brutes always with impunity and yet those avaricious wretches are calling for peace i declare it does appear to me as though some nations think god is asleep or that he made the africans for nothing else but to dig their mines and work their farms or they cannot believe history sacred or profane i ask every man who has a heart and is blessed with the privilege of believing is not god a god of justice to all his creatures do you say he is then if he gives peace and tranquillity to tyrants and permits them to keep our fathers our mothers ourselves and our children in eternal ignorance and wretchedness to support them and their families would he be to us a god of justice i ask o oh, ye christians who hold us and our children in the most abject ignorance and degradation that ever a people were afflicted with since the world began i say if god gives you peace and tranquillity and suffers you thus to go on afflicting us and our children who have never given you the least provocation would he be to us a god of justice if you will allow that we are men who feel for each other does not the blood of our fathers and of us their children cry aloud to the lord of sabaoth against you for the cruelties and murders with which you have and do continue to afflict us but it is time for me to close my remarks on the suburbs just to enter more fully into the interior of this system of cruelty and oppression End of section one. section two of walker's appeal by david walker this librivox recording is in the public domain article one our wretchedness in consequence of slavery my beloved brethren the indians of north and of south america the greeks the irish subjected unto the king of great britain the jews that ancient people of the lord the inhabitants of the islands of the sea in fine all the inhabitants of the earth except however the sons of africa are called men and of course are and ought to be free but we colored people and our children are brutes and of course are and ought to be slaves to the american people and their children for ever to dig their mines and work their farms and thus go on enriching them from one generation to another with our blood and our tears i promised in a preceding page to demonstrate to the satisfaction of the most incredulous that we colored people of these united states of america are the most wretched degraded and abject set of beings that ever lived since the world began and that the white americans having reduced us to the wretched state of slavery treat us in that condition more cruel they being an enlightened and christian people than any heathen nation did any people whom it had reduced to our condition these affirmations are so well confirmed in the minds of all unprejudiced men who have taken the trouble to read histories that they need no elucidation from me but to put them beyond all doubt i refer you in the first place to the children of jacob or of israel and egypt under pharaoh and his people some of my brethren do not know who pharaoh and the egyptians were i know it to be a fact that some of them take the egyptians to have been a gang of devils not knowing any better and that they egyptians having got possession of the lord's people treated them nearly as cruel as christian americans do us at the present day for the information of such i would only mention that the egyptians were africans or colored people such as we are some of them yellow and others dark a mixture of ethiopians and the natives of egypt about the same as you see the colored people of the united states at the present day i say i call your attention then to the children of jacob 
while i point out particularly to you his son joseph among the rest in egypt and pharaoh said unto joseph thou shalt be over my house and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt and pharaoh said unto joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of egypt now i appeal to heaven and to earth and particularly to the american people themselves who cease not to declare that our condition is not hard and that we are comparatively satisfied to rest in wretchedness and misery under them and their children not indeed to show me a colored president a governor a legislator a senator a mayor or an attorney at the bar but to show me a man of color who holds the low office of a constable or one who sits in a juror box even on a case of one of his wretched brethren throughout this great republic but let us pass joseph the son of israel a little farther in review as he existed with that heathen nation and pharaoh called joseph's name zath math Paeania, and he gave him to wife asenath the daughter of potipharah priest of on and joseph went out over all the land of egypt compare the above with the american institutions do they not institute laws to prohibit us from marrying among the whites i would wish candidly however before the lord to be understood that i would not give a pinch of snuff to be married to any white person i ever saw in all the days of my life and i do say it that the black man or man of color who will leave his own color provided he can get one who is good for anything and marry a white woman to be a double slave to her just because she is white ought to be treated by her as he surely will be viz as a nigger it is not indeed what i care about intermarriages with the whites which induce me to pass this subject in review for the lord knows that there is a day coming when they will be glad enough to get into the company of the blacks notwithstanding we are in this generation levelled by them almost on a level with the brute creation and some of us they treat even worse than they do the brutes that perish i only made this extract to show how much lower we are held and how much more cruel we are treated by the americans than were the children of jacob by the egyptians we will notice the sufferings of israel some further under heathen pharaoh compared with ours under the enlightened christians of america and pharaoh spake unto joseph saying thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee the land of egypt is before thee in the best of the land make thy father and brethren to dwell in the land of goshen let them dwell and if thou knowest any men of activity among them then make them rulers over my cattle i ask those people who treat us so well oh i ask them where is the most barren spot of land which they have given unto us israel had the most fertile land in all egypt need i mention the very notorious fact that i have known a poor man of color who labored night and day to acquire a little money and having acquired it he vested it in a small piece of land and got him a house erected thereon and having paid for the whole he moved his family into it where he was suffered to remain but nine months when he was cheated out of his property by a white man and driven out of door and is not this the case generally can a man of color buy a piece of land and keep it peaceably will not some white man try to get it from him even if it is in a mud hole i need not comment any farther on a subject which all both black and white will readily admit but i must really observe that in this very city when a man of color dies if he owned any real estate it most generally falls into the hands of some white person the wife and children of the deceased may weep and lament if they please but the estate will be kept snug enough by its white possessor but to prove farther that the condition of the israelites was better under the egyptians than ours is under the whites i call upon the professing christians i call upon the philanthropist i call upon the very tyrant himself to show me a page of history either sacred or profane on which a verse can be found which maintains that the egyptians heaped the insupportable insult upon the children of israel by telling them that they were not of the human family 
can the whites deny this charge have they not after having reduced us to the deplorable condition of slaves under their feet held us up as descending originally from the tribes of monkeys or orangutans oh my god i appeal to every man of feeling is not this insupportable is it not heaping the most gross insult upon our miseries because they have got us under their feet and we cannot help ourselves oh pity us we pray thee lord jesus master has mr jefferson declared to the world that we are inferior to the whites both in the endowments of our bodies and of minds it is indeed surprising that a man of such great learning combined with such excellent natural parts should speak so of a set of men in chains i do not know what to compare it to unless like putting one wild deer in an iron cage where it will be secured and hold another by the side of the same then let it go and expect the one in the cage to run as fast as the one at liberty so far my brethren were the egyptians from heaping these insults upon their slaves that pharaoh's daughter took moses as son of israel for her own as will appear by the following and pharaoh's daughter said unto her moses mother take this child away and nurse it for me and i will pay thee thy wages and the woman took the child moses and nursed it and the child grew and she brought him unto pharaoh's daughter and he became her son and she called his name moses and she said because i drew him out of the water in all probability moses would have become prince regent to the throne and no doubt in process of time but he would have been seated on the throne of egypt but he had rather suffer shame with the people of god than to enjoy pleasures with that wicked people for a season oh that the colored people were long since of moses excellent disposition instead of courting favor with and telling news and lies to our natural enemies against each other aiding them to keep their hellish chains of slavery upon us would we not long before this time have been respectable men instead of such wretched victims of oppression as we are would they be able to drag our mothers our fathers our wives our children and ourselves around the world in chains and handcuffs as they do to dig up gold and silver for them and theirs this question my brethren i leave for you to digest and may god almighty force his home to your hearts remember that unless you are united keeping your tongues within your teeth you will be afraid to trust your secrets to each other and thus perpetuate our miseries under the christians addition remember also to lay humble at the feet of our lord and master jesus christ with prayers and fastings let our enemies go on with their butcheries and at once fill up their cup never make an attempt to gain our freedom or natural right from under our cruel oppressors and murderers until you see your way clear footnote it is not to be understood here that i mean for us to wait until god shall take us by the hair of our heads and drag us out of abject wretchedness and slavery nor do i mean to convey the idea for us to wait until our enemies shall make preparations and call us to seize those preparations take it away from them and put every thing before us to death in order to gain our freedom which god has given us for you must remember that we are men as well as they god has been pleased to give us two eyes two hands two feet and some sense in our heads as well as they they have no more right to hold us in slavery than we have to hold them we have just as much right in the sight of god to hold them and their children in slavery and wretchedness as they have to hold us and no more End of footnote. when that hour arrives and you move be not afraid or dismayed for be you assured that jesus christ the king of heaven and of earth who is the god of justice and of armies will surely go before you and those enemies who have for hundreds of years stolen our rights and kept us ignorant of him and his divine worship he will remove millions of whom are this day so ignorant and avaricious that they cannot conceive how god can have an attribute of justice and show mercy to us because it pleased him to make us black which colour mr jefferson calls unfortunate as though we are not as thankful to our god for having made us as it pleased himself as they the whites are for having made them white they think because they hold us in their infernal chains of slavery that we wish to be white or of their colour but they are dreadfully deceived we wish to be just as it pleased our creator to have made us and no avaricious and unmerciful wretches have any business to make slaves of or hold us in slavery how would they like for us to make slaves of and hold them in cruel slavery and murder them as they do us but is mr jefferson's assertions true viz that it is unfortunate for us that our creator has been pleased to make us black we will not take his say-so for the fact 
the world will have an opportunity to see whether it is unfortunate for us that our creator has made us darker than the whites fear not the number and education of our enemies against whom we shall have to contend for our lawful right guaranteed to us by our maker for why should we be afraid when god is and will continue if we continue humble to be on our side the man who would not fight under our lord and master jesus christ in the glorious and heavenly cause of freedom and of god to be delivered from the most wretched abject and servile slavery that ever a people was afflicted with since the foundation of the world to the present day ought to be kept with all of his children or family in slavery or in chains to be butchered by his cruel enemies i saw a paragraph a few years since in a south carolina paper which speaking of the barbarity of the turks it said quote, the turks are the most barbarous people in the world they treat the greeks more like brutes than human beings End of quote. and in the same paper was an advertisement which said quote, eight well-built virginia and maryland negro fellows and four wenches will positively be sold this day to the highest bidder End of quote. and what astonished me still more was to see in the same humane paper the cuts of three men with clubs and budgets on their backs and an advertisement offering a considerable sum of money for their apprehension and delivery i declare it is really so amusing to hear the southerners and westerners of this country talk about barbarity that it is positively enough to make a man smile the sufferings of the helots among the spartans were somewhat severe it is true but to say that theirs were as severe as ours among the americans i do most strenuously deny for instance can any man show me an article on a page of ancient history which specifies that the spartans chained and handcuffed the helots and dragged them from their wives and children children from their parents mothers from their suckling babes wives from their husbands driving them from one end of the country to the other notice the spartans were heathens who lived long before our divine master made his appearance in the flesh can christian americans deny these barbarous cruelties have you not americans having subjected us under you added to these miseries by insulting us and telling us to our face because we are helpless that we are not of the human family i ask you o oh, americans i ask you in the name of the lord can you deny these charges some perhaps may deny by saying that they never thought or said that we were not men but do not actions speak louder than words have they not made provisions for the greeks and irish nations who have never done the least thing for them while we who have enriched their country with our blood and tears have dug up gold and silver for them and their children from generation to generation and are in more miseries than any other people under heaven are not seen but by comparatively a handful of the american people there are indeed more ways to kill a dog besides choking it to death with butter further the spartans or lacedaemonians had some frivolous pretext for enslaving the helots for they helots while being free inhabitants of sparta stirred up an intestine commotion and were by the spartans subdued and made prisoners of war consequently they and their children were condemned to perpetual slavery i have been for years troubling the pages of historians to find out what our fathers have done to the white christians of america to merit such condign punishment as they have inflicted on them and do continue to inflict on us their children but i must aver that my researches have hitherto been to no effect i have therefore come to the immovable conclusion that they americans have and do continue to punish us for nothing else but for enriching them and their country for i cannot conceive of anything else nor will i ever believe otherwise until the lord shall convince me the world knows that slavery as it existed among the romans which was the primary cause of their destruction was comparatively speaking no more than a cipher when compared with ours under the americans indeed i should not have noticed the roman slaves had not the very learned and penetrating mr jefferson said quote, when a master was murdered all his slaves in the same house or within hearing were condemned to death End of quote. here let me ask mr jefferson but he is gone to answer at the bar of god for the deeds done in his body while living i therefore ask the whole american people had i not rather die or be put to death than to be a slave to any tyrant who takes not only my own but my wife and children's lives by the inches yea would i meet death with avidity far far in preference to such servile submission to the 
murderous hands of tyrants mr jefferson's very severe remarks on us have been so extensively argued upon by men whose sentiments in literature i shall never be able to reach that i would not have meddled with it were it not to solicit each of my brethren who has the spirit of a man to buy a copy of mr jefferson's notes on virginia and put it in the hand of his son for let no one of us suppose that the refutations which have been written by our white friends are enough they are whites we are blacks we in the world wish to see the charges of mr jefferson refuted by the blacks themselves according to their chance for we must remember that what the whites have written respecting this subject is other men's labours and did not emanate from the blacks i know well that there are some talents and learning among the coloured people of this country which we have not a chance to develop in consequence of oppression but our oppression ought not to hinder us from acquiring all we can for we will have a chance to develop them by and by god will not suffer us always to be oppressed our sufferings will come to an end in spite of all the americans this side of eternity then we will want all the learning and talents among ourselves and perhaps more to govern ourselves every dog must have its day the americans is coming to an end but let us review mr jefferson's remarks respecting us some further comparing our miserable fathers with the learned philosophers of greece he says yet notwithstanding these and other discouraging circumstances among the romans their slaves were often their rarest artists they excelled too in science insomuch as to be usually employed as tutors to their master's children epictetus terence and phaedrus were slaves but they were of the race of whites it is not their condition then but nature which has produced the distinction see this my brethren do you believe that this assertion is swallowed by millions of the whites do you know that mr jefferson was one of as great characters as ever lived among the whites see his writings for the world and public labors for the united states of america do you believe that the assertions of such a man will pass away into oblivion unobserved by this people and the world if you do you are much mistaken see how the american people treat us have we souls in our bodies are we men who have any spirits at all i know that there are many swell-bellied fellows among us whose greatest object is to fill their stomachs such i do not mean i am after those who know and feel that we are men as well as other people to them i say that unless we try to refute mr jefferson's arguments respecting us we will only establish them but the slaves among the romans everybody who has read history knows that as soon as a slave among the romans obtained his freedom he could rise to the greatest eminence in the state and there was no law instituted to hinder a slave from buying his freedom have not the americans instituted laws to hinder us from obtaining our freedom do any deny this charge read the laws of virginia north carolina etc further have not the americans instituted laws to prohibit a man of color from obtaining and holding any office whatever under the government of the united states of america now mr jefferson tells us that our condition is not so hard as the slaves were under the romans it is time for me to bring this article to a close but before i close it i must observe to my brethren that at the close of the first revolution in this country with great britain there were but thirteen states in the union now there are twenty-four most of which are slaveholding states and the whites are dragging us around in chains and in handcuffs to their new states and territories to work their mines and farms to enrich them and their children and millions of them believing firmly that we being a little darker than they were made by our creator to be an inheritance to them and their children for ever the same as a parcel of brutes are we men i ask you my brethren are we men did our creator make us to be slaves to dust and ashes like ourselves are they not dying worms as well as we have they not to make their appearance before the tribunal of heaven to answer for the deeds done in the body as well as we have we any other master but jesus christ alone is he not their master as well as ours what right then have we to obey and call any other master but himself how we to be so submissive to a gang of men whom we cannot tell whether they are as good as ourselves or not i never could conceive however this is shut up with the lord and we cannot precisely tell but i declare we judge men by their works the whites have always been an unjust jealous unmerciful avaricious and bloodthirsty set of beings always seeking after power and authority we view them all over the confederacy of greece where they were first known to be anything in consequence of education we see them there cutting each other's throats trying to subject each other to wretchedness and misery to effect which they used all kinds of deceitful unfair 
and a merciful means we view them next in rome where the spirit of tyranny and deceit raged still higher we view them in gaul spain and in britain in fine we view them all over europe together with what were scattered about in asia and africa as heathens and we see them acting more like devils than accountable men but some may ask did not the blacks of africa and the mulattoes of asia go on in the same way as did the whites of europe i answer no they never were half so avaricious deceitful and unmerciful as the whites according to their knowledge but we will leave the whites or europeans as heathens and take a view of them as christians in which capacity we see them as cruel if not more so than ever in fact take them as a body they are ten times more cruel avaricious and unmerciful than ever they were for while they were heathens they were bad enough it is true but it is positively a fact that they were not quite so audacious as to go and take vessel loads of men women and children and in cold blood and through devilishness throw them into the sea and murder them in all kinds of ways while they were heathens they were too ignorant for such barbarity but being christians enlightened and sensible they are completely prepared for such hellish cruelties now suppose god were to give them more sense what would they do if it were possible would they not dethrone jehovah and seat themselves upon his throne i therefore in the name and fear of the lord god of heaven and of earth divested of prejudice either on the side of my colour or that of the whites advance my suspicion of them whether they are as good by nature as we are or not their actions since they were known as a people have been the reverse i do indeed suspect them but this as i before observed is shut up with the lord we cannot exactly tell it will be proved in succeeding generations the whites have had the essence of the gospel as it was preached by my master and his apostles the ethiopians have not who are to have it in its meridian splendour the lord will give it to them to their satisfaction i hope and pray my god that they will make good use of it that it may be well with them footnote it is my solemn belief that if ever the world becomes christianized which must certainly take place before long it will be through the means under god of the blacks who are now held in wretchedness and degradation by the white christians of the world who before they learn to do justice to us before our maker and he be reconciled to us and reconcile us to them and by that means have clear consciences before god and man send out missionaries to convert the heathens many of whom after they cease to worship gods which neither see nor hear become ten times more the children of hell than ever they were why what is the reason why the reason is obvious they must learn to do justice at home before they go into distant lands to display their charity christianity and benevolence when they learn to do justice god will accept their offering no man may think that i am against missionaries for i am not my object is to see justice done at home before we go to convert the heathens in of section two section three of walker's appeal by david walker this librivox recording is in the public domain article two our wretchedness in consequence of ignorance ignorance my brethren is a mist low down into the very dark and almost impenetrable abyss in which our fathers for many centuries have been plunged the christians and enlightened of europe and some of asia seeing the ignorance and consequent degradation of our fathers instead of trying to enlighten them by teaching them that religion and light with which god had blessed them they have plunged them into wretchedness ten thousand times more intolerable than if they had left them entirely to the lord and to add to their miseries deep down into which they have plunged them tell them that they are an inferior and distinct race of beings which they will be glad enough to recall and swallow by and by fortune and misfortune two inseparable companions lay rolled up in the wheel of events which have from the creation of the world and will continue to take place among men until god shall dash worlds together when we take a retrospective view of the arts and sciences the wise legislators the pyramids and other magnificent buildings the turning of the channel of the river nile by the sons of africa or of ham 
among whom learning originated and was carried thence into greece where it was improved upon and refined thence among the romans and all over the then enlightened parts of the world and it has been enlightening the dark and benighted minds of men from them down to this day i say when i view retrospectively the renown of that once mighty people the children of our great progenitor i am indeed cheered yea further when i view that mighty son of africa hannibal one of the greatest generals of antiquity who defeated and cut off so many thousands of the white romans or murderers and who carried his victorious arms to the very gate of rome and i give it as my candid opinion that had carthage been well united and had given him good support he would have carried that cruel and barbarous city by storm but they were disunited as the colored people are now in the united states of america the reason our natural enemies are enabled to keep their feet on our throats beloved brethren here let me tell you and believe it that the lord our god as true as he sits on his throne in heaven and as true as our saviour died to redeem the world will give you a hannibal and when the lord shall have raised him up and given him to you for your possession o oh, my suffering brethren remember the divisions and consequent sufferings of carthage and of haiti read the history particularly of haiti and see how they were butchered by the whites and do you take warning the person whom god shall give you give him your support and let him go his length and behold in him the salvation of your god god will indeed deliver you through him from your deplorable and wretched condition under the christians of america i charge you this day before my god to lay no obstacle in his way but let him go the whites want slaves and want us for their slaves but some of them will curse the day they ever saw us as true as the sun ever shone in its meridian splendor my color will root some of them out of the very face of the earth they shall have enough of making slaves of and butchering and murdering us in the manner which they have no doubt some may say that i write with a bad spirit and that i being a black wish these things to occur whether i write with a bad or good spirit i say if these things do not occur in their proper time it is because the world in which we live does not exist and we are deceived with regard to its existence it is immaterial however to me who believe or who refuse though i should like to see the whites repent peradventure god may have mercy on them some however have gone so far that their cup must be filled but what need have i to refer to antiquity when haiti the glory of the blacks and terror of tyrants is enough to convince the most avaricious and stupid of wretches which is at this time and i am sorry to say it plagued with that scourge of nations the catholic religion but i hope and pray god that she may yet rid herself of it and adopt in its stead the protestant faith also i hope that she may keep peace within her borders and be united keeping a strict lookout for tyrants for if they get the least chance to injure her they will avail themselves of it as true as the lord lives in heaven but one thing which gives me joy is that they are men who would be cut off to a man before they would yield to the combined forces of the whole world in fact if the whole world was combined against them it could not do anything with them unless the lord delivers them up ignorance and treachery one against the other a grovelling servile and abject submission to the lash of tyrants we see plainly my brethren are not the natural elements of the blacks as the americans try to make us believe but these are misfortunes which god has suffered our fathers to be enveloped in for many ages no doubt in consequence of their disobedience to their maker and which do indeed reign at this time among us almost to the destruction of all other principles for i must truly say that ignorance the mother of treachery and deceit gnaws into our very vitals ignorance as it now exists among us produces a state of things o oh my lord too horrible to present to the world any man who is curious to see the full force of ignorance developed among the colored people of the united states of america has only to go into the southern and western states of this confederacy where if he is not a tyrant but has the feelings of a human being who can feel for a fellow-creature he may see enough to make his very heart bleed 
he may see there a son take his mother who bore almost the pains of death to give him birth and by the command of a tyrant strip her as naked as she came into the world and apply the cowhide to her until she falls a victim to death in the road he may see a husband take his dear wife not unfrequently in a pregnant state and perhaps far advanced and beat her for an unmerciful wretch until his infant falls a lifeless lump at her feet can the americans escape god's almighty if they do can he be to us a god of justice god is just and i know it for he has convinced me to my satisfaction i cannot doubt him my observer may see fathers beating their sons mothers their daughters and children their parents all to pacify the passions of unrelenting tyrants he may also see them telling news and lies making mischief one upon another these are some of the productions of ignorance which he will see practised among my dear brethren who are held in unjust slavery and wretchedness by avaricious and unmerciful tyrants to whom and their hellish deeds i would suffer my life to be taken before i would submit and when my curious observer comes to take notice of those who are said to be free which assertion i deny and who are making some frivolous pretensions to common sense he will see that branch of ignorance among the slaves assuming a more cunning and deceitful course of procedure he may see some of my brethren in league with tyrants selling their own brethren into hell upon earth not dissimilar to the exhibitions in africa but in a more secret servile and abject manner o oh, heaven i am full i can hardly move my pen and as i expect some will try to put me to death to strike terror into others and to obliterate from their minds the notion of freedom so as to keep my brethren the more secure in wretchedness where they will be permitted to stay but a short time whether tyrants believe it or not i shall give the world a development of facts which are already witnessed in the courts of heaven my observer may see some of those ignorant and treacherous creatures colored people sneaking about in the large cities endeavouring to find out all strange colored people where they work and where they reside asking them questions and trying to ascertain whether they are runaways or not telling them at the same time that they always have been are and always will be friends to their brethren and perhaps that they themselves are absconders and a thousand such treacherous lies to get the better information of the more ignorant there have been and are at this day in boston new york philadelphia and baltimore colored men who are in league with tyrants and to receive a great portion of their daily bread of the monies which they acquire from the blood and tears of their more miserable brethren whom they scandalously delivered into the hands of our natural enemies to show the force of degraded ignorance and deceit among us some farther i will give here an extract from a paragraph which may be found in the columbian sentinel of this city for september ninth eighteen twenty nine on the first page of which the curious may find an article headed affray and murder portsmouth ohio august twenty two eighteen twenty nine quote a most shocking outrage was committed in kentucky about eight miles from this place on fourteenth instant a negro driver by the name of gordon who had purchased in maryland about sixty negroes was taking them assisted by an associate named allen and the wagoner who conveyed the baggage to the mississippi the men were handcuffed and chained together in the usual manner for driving those poor wretches while the women and children were suffered to proceed without encumbrance it appears that by means of a file the negroes unobserved had succeeded in separating the iron which bound their hands in such a way as to be able to throw them off at any moment about eight o'clock in the morning while proceeding on the state road leading from greenup to vanceburg two of them dropped their shackles and commenced a fight when the wagoner pettit rushed in with his whip to compel them to desist at this moment every negro was found to be perfectly at liberty and one of them seizing a club gave pettit a violent blow on the head and laid him dead at his feet and allen who came to his assistance met a similar fate from the contents of a pistol fired by another of the gang gordon was then attacked seized and held by one of the negroes whilst another fired twice at him with a pistol the ball of which each time grazed his head but not proving effectual he was beaten with clubs and left for dead they then commenced pillaging the wagon and with an axe split open the trunk of gordon and rifled it of the money about two thousand four hundred dollars sixteen of the negroes then took to the woods gordon in the meantime not being materially injured was enabled by the assistance of one of the women to mount his horse and flee pursued however by one of the gang on another horse with a drawn pistol fortunately he escaped with his life barely arriving at a plantation as the negro came in sight who then turned about and retreated 
the neighbourhood was immediately rallied and a hot pursuit given which we understand has resulted in the capture of the whole gang and the recovery of the greatest part of the money seven of the negro men and one woman it is said were engaged in the murders and will be brought to trial at the next court in greensburg here my brethren i want you to notice particularly in the above article the ignorant and deceitful actions of this colored woman i beg you to view it candidly as for eternity here a notorious wretch with two other confederates had sixty of them in a gang driving them like brutes the men all in chains and handcuffs and by the help of god they got their chains and handcuffs thrown off and caught two of the wretches and put them to death and beat the other until they thought he was dead and left him for dead however he deceived them and rising from the ground this servile woman helped him upon his horse and he made his escape brethren what do you think of this was it the natural fine feelings of this woman to save such a wretch alive i know that the blacks take them half enlightened and ignorant are more humane and merciful than most enlightened and refined european that can be found in all the earth let no one say that i assert this because i am prejudiced on the side of my colour and against the whites or europeans for what i write i do it candidly for my god and the good of both parties natural observations have taught me these things there is a solemn awe in the hearts of the blacks as it respects murdering men whereas the whites though they are great cowards where they have the advantage or think that there are any prospects of getting it they murder all before them in order to subject men to wretchedness and degradation under them this is the natural result of pride and avarice but i declare the actions of this black woman are really insupportable for my own part i cannot think it was anything but servile deceit combined with the most gross ignorance for we must remember that humanity kindness and the fear of the lord does not consist in protecting devils here is a set of wretches who had sixty of them in a gang driving them around the country like brutes to dig up gold and silver for them which they will get enough of yet should the lives of such creatures be spared are god and mammon in league what has the lord to do with a gang of desperate wretches who go sneaking about the country like robbers light upon his people wherever they can get a chance binding them with chains and handcuffs beat and murder them as they would rattlesnakes are they not the lord's enemies ought they not to be destroyed any person who will save such wretches from destruction is fighting against the lord and will receive his just recompense the black men acted like blockheads why did they not make sure of the wretch he would have made sure of them if he could it is just the way with black men eight white men can frighten fifty of them whereas if you can only get courage into the blacks i do declare it that one good black man can put to death six white men and i give it as a fact let twelve black men get well armed for battle and they will kill and put to flight fifty whites the reason is the blacks once you get them started they glory in death the whites have had us under them for more than three centuries murdering and treating us like brutes and as mr jefferson wisely said they have never found us out they do not know indeed that there is an unconquerable disposition in the breasts of the blacks which when it is fully awakened and put in motion will be subdued only with the destruction of the animal existence get the blacks started and if you do not have a gang of tigers and lions to deal with i am a deceiver of the blacks and of the whites how sixty of them could let that wretch escape unkilled i cannot conceive they will have to suffer as much for the two whom they secured as if they had put one hundred to death if you commence make sure work do not trifle for they will not trifle with you they want us for their slaves and think nothing of murdering us in order to subject us to that wretched condition therefore if there is an attempt made by us kill or be killed now i ask you had you not rather be killed than to be a slave to a tyrant who takes the life of your mother wife and dear little children look upon your mother wife and children and answer god almighty and believe this that it is no more harm for you to kill a man who is trying to kill you than it is for you to take a drink of water when thirsty in fact the man who will stand still and let another murder him is worse than an infidel and if he has common sense ought not to be pitied the actions of this deceitful and ignorant colored woman in saving the life of a desperate wretch whose avaricious and cruel object was to drive her and her companions in miseries through the country like cattle to make his fortune on their carcasses are but too much like that of thousands of our brethren in these states if any thing is whispered by one which has any allusion to the melioration of their dreadful condition they run and tell tyrants that they may be enabled to keep them the longer in wretchedness and miseries o oh, colored people of these united states i ask you in the name of that god 
who made us have we in consequence of oppression nearly lost the spirit of man and in no very trifling degree adopted that of brutes do you answer no i ask you then what set of men can you point me to in all the world who are so abjectly employed by their oppressors as we are by our natural enemies how can oh how can those enemies but say that we and our children are not of the human family but were made by our creator to be an inheritance to them and theirs for ever how can the slaveholders but say that they can bribe the best colored person in the country to sell his brethren for a trifling sum of money and take that atrocity to confirm them in their avaricious opinion that we were made to be slaves to them and their children how could mr jefferson but say quote, i advance it therefore as a suspicion only that the blacks whether originally a distinct race or made distinct by time and circumstances are inferior to the whites in the endowments both of body and mind it says he is not against experience to suppose that different species of the same genius or varieties of the same species may possess different qualifications End of quote. here my brethren listen to him quote, will not a lover of natural history then one who views the gradations in all the races of animals with the eye of philosophy excuse an effort to keep those in the department of man as distinct as nature has formed them End of quote. i hope you will try to find out the meaning of this verse its widest sense and all its bearings whether you do or not remember the whites do this very verse brethren having emanated from mr jefferson a much greater philosopher the world never afforded has in truth injured us more and has been as great a barrier to our emancipation as anything that has ever been advanced against us i hope you will not let it pass unnoticed he goes on further and says quote, this unfortunate difference of colour and perhaps the faculty is a powerful obstacle to the emancipation of these people many of their advocates while they wish to vindicate the liberty of human nature are anxious also to preserve its dignity and beauty some of these embarrassed by the question what further is to be done with them join themselves in opposition with those who are actuated by sordid avarice only End of quote. now i ask you candidly my suffering brethren in time who are candidates for the eternal worlds how could mr jefferson but have given the world these remarks respecting us when we are so submissive to them and so much servile deceit prevail among ourselves when we so meanly submit to their murderous lashes to which neither the indians nor any other people under heaven would submit no they would die to a man before they would suffer such things from men who are no better than themselves and perhaps not so good yes how can our friends but be embarrassed as mr jefferson says by the question quote, what further is to be done with these people End of quote. for while they are working for our emancipation we are by our treachery wickedness and deceit working against ourselves and our children helping ours and the enemies of god to keep us and our dear little children in their infernal chains of slavery indeed our friends cannot but relapse and join themselves quote, with those who are actuated by sordid avarice only End of quote. for my own part i am glad mr jefferson has advanced his positions for your sake for you will either have to contradict or confirm him by your own actions and not by what our friends have said or done for us for those things are other men's labors and do not satisfy the americans who are waiting for us to prove to them ourselves that we are men before they will be willing to admit the fact for i pledge you my sacred word of honor that mr jefferson's remarks respecting us have sunk deep into the hearts of millions of the whites and never will be removed this side of eternity for how can they when we are confirming him every day by our grovelling submissions and treachery i aver that when i look over these united states of america and the world and see the ignorant deceptions and consequent wretchedness of my brethren i am brought oft times solemnly to his stand and in the midst of my reflections i exclaim to my god quote, lord didst thou make us to be slaves to our brethren the whites End of quote. but when i reflect that god is just and that millions of my wretched brethren would meet death with glory yea more would plunge into the very mouths of cannons and be torn into particles as minute as the atoms which compose the elements of the earth in preference to a mean submission to the lash of tyrants i am with streaming eyes compelled to shrink back into nothingness before my maker and exclaim again thy will be done o lord god almighty men of colour who are also of sense for you particularly is my appeal designed our more ignorant brethren are not able to penetrate its value i call upon you therefore to cast your eyes upon the wretchedness of your brethren and to do your utmost to enlighten them 
go to work and enlighten your brethren let the lord see you doing what you can to rescue them and yourselves from degradation do any of you say that you and your family are free and happy and what have you to do with the wretched slaves and other people so can i say for i enjoy as much freedom as any of you if i am not quite as well off as the best of you look into our freedom and happiness and see of what kind they are composed they are of the very lowest kind they are the very dregs they are the most servile and abject kind that ever a people was in possession of if any of you wish to know how free you are let one of you start and go through the southern and western states of this country and unless you travel as a slave to a white man a servant is a slave to the man whom he serves or have your free papers which if you are not careful they will get from you if they do not take you up and put you in jail and if you cannot give good evidence of your freedom sell you into eternal slavery i am not a living man or any man of colour immaterial who he is or where he came from if he is not the fourth from the negro race as we are called the white christians of america will serve him the same they will sink him into wretchedness and degradation for ever while he lives and yet some of you have the hardihood to say that you are free and happy may god have mercy on your freedom and happiness i met a colored man in the street a short time since with a string of boots on his shoulders we fell into conversation and in course of which i said to him what a miserable set of people we are he asked why said i we are so subjected under the whites that we cannot obtain the comforts of life but by cleaning their boots and shoes old clothes waiting on them shaving them etc said he with the boots on his shoulders i am completely happy i never want to live any better or happier than when i can get plenty of boots and shoes to clean oh how can those who are actuated by avarice only but think that our creator made us to be an inheritance to them for ever when they see that our greatest glory is centred in such mean and low objects understand me brethren i do not mean to speak against the occupations by which we acquire enough and sometimes scarcely that to render ourselves and families comfortable through life i am subjected to the same inconvenience as you all my objections are to our glorying and being happy in such low employments for if we are men we ought to be thankful to the lord for the past and for the future be looking forward with thankful hearts to higher attainments than wielding the razor and cleaning boots and shoes the man whose aspirations are not above and even below these is indeed ignorant and wretched enough i advance it therefore to you not as a problematical but as an unshaken and for ever immovable fact that your full glory and happiness as well as all other coloured people under heaven shall never be fully consummated but with the entire emancipation of your enslaved brethren all over the world you may therefore go to work and do what you can to rest your join in with tyrants to oppress them and yourselves until the lord shall come upon you all like a thief in the night for i believe it is the will of the lord that our greatest happiness shall consist in working for the salvation of our whole body when this is accomplished a burst of glory will shine upon you which will indeed astonish you in the world do any of you say this never will be done i assure you that god will accomplish it if nothing else will answer he will hurl tyrants and devils into atoms and make way for his people but oh my brethren i say unto you again you must go to work and prepare the way of the lord there is a great work for you to do as trifling as some of you may think of it you have to prove to the americans and the world that we are men and not brutes as we have been represented and by millions treated remember to let the aim of your labours among your brethren and particularly the youths be the dissemination of education and religion footnote never mind what the ignorant ones among us may say many of whom when you speak to them for their good and try to enlighten their minds laugh at you and perhaps tell you plump to your face that they want no instruction from you or any other nigger and all such aggravating language no if you are a man of understanding and sound sense i conjure you in the name of the lord and of all that is good to impute their actions to ignorance and wink at their follies and do your very best to get around them some way or other for remember they are your brethren and i declare to you that it is for your interest to teach and enlighten them End of footnote. it is lamentable that many of our children go to school from four until they are eight or ten and sometimes fifteen years of age and leave a school knowing but a little more about the grammar of their language than a horse does about handling a musket 
and not a few of them are really so ignorant that they are unable to answer a person correctly general questions in geography and to hear them read would only be to disgust a man who has a taste for reading which to do well as trifling as it may appear to some to the ignorant in particular is a great part of learning some few of them may make out to scribble tolerably well over a half sheet of paper which i believe has hitherto been a powerful obstacle in our way to keep us from acquiring knowledge an ignorant father who knows no more than what nature has taught him together with what little he acquires by the senses of hearing and seeing finding his son able to write a neat hand sets it down for granted that he has as good learning as anybody the young ignorant gump hearing his father or mother who perhaps may be ten times more ignorant in point of literature than himself extolling his learning struts about in the full assurance that his attainments in literature are sufficient to take him through the world when in fact he has scarcely any learning at all i promiscuously fell in conversation once with an elderly colored man on the topics of education and of the great prevalency of ignorance among us said he quote, i know that our people are very ignorant but my son has a good education i spent a great deal of money on his education he can write as well as any white man and i assure you that no one can fool him etc end of quote said i what else can your son do besides writing a good hand can he post a set of books in a mercantile manner can he write a neat piece of composition in prose or in verse to these interrogations he answered in the negative said i did your son learn while he was at school the width and depth of english grammar to which he also replied in the negative telling me that his son did not learn those things your son said i then has hardly any learning at all he is almost as ignorant and more so than many of those who never went to school one day in all their lives my friend got a little put out and so walking off said that his son could write as well as any white man most of the colored people when they speak of the education of one among us who can write a neat hand and who perhaps knows nothing but to scribble and puff pretty fair on a small scrap of paper immaterial whether his words are grammatical or spelled correctly or not if it only looks beautiful they say he has as good an education as any white man he can write as well as any white man etc the poor ignorant creature hearing this he is ashamed for ever after to let any person see him humbling himself to another for knowledge but going about trying to deceive those who are more ignorant than himself he at last falls an ignorant victim to death in wretchedness i pray that the lord may undeceive my ignorant brethren and permit them to throw away pretensions and seek after the substance of learning i would crawl on my hands and knees through mud and mire to the feet of a learned man where i would sit and humbly supplicate him to instill into me that which neither devils nor tyrants could remove only with my life for colored people to acquire learning in this country makes tyrants quake and tremble on their sandy foundation why what is the matter why they know that their infernal deeds of cruelty will be made known to the world do you suppose one man of good sense and learning would submit himself his father mother wife and children to be slaves to a wretched man like himself who instead of compensating him for his labours chains and handcuffs and beats him and family almost to death leaving life enough in them however to work for and call him master no no he would cut his devilish throat from ear to ear and well do slaveholders know it the bare name of educating the coloured people scares our cruel oppressors almost to death but if they do not have enough to be frightened for yet it will be because they can always keep us ignorant and because god approbates their cruelties with which they have been for centuries murdering us the whites shall have enough of the blacks yet as true as god sits on his throne in heaven some of our brethren are so very full of learning that you cannot mention anything to them which they do not know better than yourself nothing is strange to them they knew everything years ago if anything should be mentioned in company where they are immaterial how important it is respecting us or the world if they had not divulged it they make light of it and affect to have known it long before it was mentioned and try to make all in the room or wherever you may be believe that your conversation is nothing not worth hearing all this is the result of ignorance and ill breeding for a man of good breeding sense and penetration if he had heard a subject told twenty times over and should happen to be in company where one should commence telling it again he would wait with patience on its narrator and see if he would tell it as it was told in his presence before paying the most strict attention to what is said to see if any more light will be thrown on the subject for all men are not gifted alike in telling or even hearing the most simple narration these ignorant vicious and wretched men 
contribute almost as much injury to our body as tyrants themselves by doing so much for the promotion of ignorance amongst us for they making such pretensions to knowledge such of our our youth are as are seeking after knowledge and can get access to them take them as criterions to go by who will lead them into a channel where unless the lord blesses them with the privilege of seeing their folly they will be irretrievably lost for ever while in time i must close this article by relating the very heart-rending fact that i have examined schoolboys and young men of colour in different parts of the country in the most simple parts of murray's english grammar and not more than one in thirty was able to give a correct answer to my interrogations if any one contradicts me let him step out of his door into the streets of boston new york philadelphia or baltimore no use to mention any other for the christians are too charitable further south or west i say let him who disputes me step out of his door into the streets of either of those four cities and promiscuously collect one hundred schoolboys or young men of colour who have been to school and who are considered by the coloured people to have received an excellent education because perhaps some of them can write a good hand but who notwithstanding their neat writing may be almost as ignorant in comparison as a horse and i say it he will hardly find in this enlightened day and in the midst of this charitable people five in one hundred who are able to correct the false grammar of their language the cause of this almost universal ignorance among us i appeal to our schoolmasters to declare here is a fact which i this very minute take from the mouth of a young coloured man who has been to school in this state massachusetts nearly nine years and who knows grammar this day nearly as well as he did the day he first entered the schoolhouse under a white master this young man says my master would never allow me to study grammar i asked him why the school committee said he forbid the coloured children learning grammar they would not allow any but the white children to study grammar it is a notorious fact that the major part of the white americans have ever since we have been among them tried to keep us ignorant and make us believe that god made us and our children to be slaves to them and theirs oh my god have mercy on christian americans End of section three section four of walker's appeal by david walker this librivox recording is in the public domain article three our wretchedness in consequence of the preachers of the religion of jesus christ religion my brethren is a substance of deep consideration among all nations of the earth the pagans have a kind as well as the mahometans the jews and the christians but pure and undefiled religion such as was preached by jesus christ and his apostles is hard to be found in all the earth god through his instrument moses handed a dispensation of his divine will to the children of israel after they had left egypt for the land of canaan or of promise who through hypocrisy oppression and unbelief departed from the faith he then by his apostles handed a dispensation of his together with the will of jesus christ to the europeans in europe who in open violation of which have made merchandise of us and it does appear as though they take this very dispensation to aid them in their infernal depredations upon us indeed the way in which religion was and is conducted by the europeans and their descendants one might believe it was a plan fabricated by themselves and the devils to oppress us but hark my master has taught me better than to believe it he has taught me that his gospel as it was preached by himself and his apostles remains the same and notwithstanding europe has tried to mingle blood and oppression with it it is well known to the christian world that bartholomew las casas that very very notoriously avaricious catholic priest or preacher and adventurer with columbus in his second voyage proposed to his countrymen the spaniards in hispaniola to import the africans from the portuguese settlement in africa to dig up gold and silver and work their plantations for them to effect which he made a voyage thence to spain and opened the subject to his master ferdinand then in declining health who listened to the plan but who died soon after 
and left it in the hand of his successor charles v this wretch las casas the preacher succeeded so well in his plans of oppression that in fifteen o three the first blacks had been imported into the new world elated with this success and stimulated by sordid avarice only he importuned charles v in fifteen eleven to grant permission to a flemish merchant to import four thousand blacks at one time footnote it is not unworthy of remark that the portuguese and spaniards were among if not the very first nations upon earth about three hundred and fifty or sixty years ago but see what those christians have come to now in consequence of afflicting our fathers and us who have never molested or disturbed them or any other of the white christians but have they received one quarter of what the lord will yet bring upon them for the murders they have inflicted upon us they have had and in some degree have now sweet times on our blood and groans the time however of bitterness have some time since commenced with them there is a god the maker and preserver of all things who will as sure as the world exists give all his creatures their just recompense of reward in this and in the world to come we may fool or deceive and keep each other in the most profound ignorance beat murder and keep each other out of what is our lawful rights or the rights of man yet it is impossible for us to deceive or escape the lord almighty End of footnote. thus we see through the instrumentality of a pretended preacher of the gospel of jesus christ our common master our wretchedness first commenced in america where it has been continued from fifteen o three to this day eighteen twenty nine a period of three hundred and twenty six years but two hundred and nine from sixteen twenty when twenty of our fathers were brought into jamestown virginia by a dutch man of war and sold off like brutes to the highest bidders and there is not a doubt in my mind but that tyrants are in hope to perpetuate our miseries under them and their children until the final consummation of all things but if they do not get dreadfully deceived it will be because god has forgotten them the pagans jews and mahometans try to make proselytes to their religions and whatever human beings adopt their religions they extend to them their protection but christian and americans not only hinder their fellow-creatures the africans but thousands of them will absolutely beat a coloured person nearly to death if they catch him on his knees supplicating the throne of grace this barbarous cruelty was by all the heathen nations of antiquity and is by the pagans jews and mahometans of the present day left entirely to christian americans to inflict on the africans and their descendants that their cup which is nearly full may be completed i have known tyrants or usurpers of human liberty in different parts of this country to take their fellow-creatures the colored people and beat them until they would scarcely leave life in them what for why they say quote, the black devils have the audacity to be found making prayers and supplications to the god who made them End of quote. yes i have known small collections of colored people to have convened together for no other purpose than to worship god almighty in spirit and in truth to the best of their knowledge when tyrants calling themselves patrols would also convene and wait almost in breathless silence for the poor coloured people to commence singing and praying to the lord our god as soon as they had commenced the wretches would burst in upon them and drag them out and commence beating them as they would rattlesnakes many of whom they would beat so unmercifully that they would hardly be able to crawl for weeks and sometimes for months yet the american ministers send out missionaries to convert the heathen while they keep us and our children sank at their feet in the most abject ignorance and wretchedness that ever a people was afflicted with since the world began will the lord suffer this people to proceed much longer will he not stop them in their career does he regard the heathens abroad more than the heathens among the americans surely the americans must believe that god is partial notwithstanding his apostle peter declared before cornelius and others that he has no respect to persons but in every nation he that feareth god and worketh righteousness is accepted with him quote the word said he which god sent unto the children of israel preaching peace by jesus christ he is the lord of all End of quote. have not the americans the bible in their hands do they believe it surely they do not see how they treat us in open violation of the bible they no doubt will be greatly offended with me but if god does not awaken them it will be because they are superior to other men as they have represented themselves to be our divine lord and master said quote, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you do ye even so unto them 
end of quote but an american minister with the bible in his hand holds us and our children in the most abject slavery and wretchedness now i ask them would they like for us to hold them and their children in abject slavery and wretchedness no says one that never can be done you are too abject and ignorant to do it you are not men you were made to be slaves to us to dig up gold and silver for us and our children know this my dear sirs that although you treat us and our children now as you do your domestic beast yet the final result of all future events are known but to god almighty alone who rules in the armies of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and who dethrones one earthly king and sits up another as it seemeth good in his holy sight we may attribute these vicissitudes to what we please but the god of armies and of justice rules in heaven and in earth and the whole american people shall see and know it yet to their satisfaction i have known pretended preachers of the gospel of my master who not only held us as their natural inheritance but treated us with as much rigour as any infidel or deist in the world just as though they were intent only on taking our blood and groans to glorify the lord jesus christ the wicked and ungodly seeing their preachers treat us with so much cruelty they say our preachers who must be right if anybody are treat them like brutes and why cannot we they think it is no harm to keep them in slavery and put the whip to them and why cannot we do the same they being preachers of the gospel of jesus christ if it were any harm they would surely preach against their oppression and do their utmost to erase it from the country not only in one or two cities but one continual cry would be raised in all parts of this confederacy and would cease only with the complete overthrow of the system of slavery in every part of the country but how far the american preachers are from preaching against slavery and oppression which have carried their country to the brink of a precipice to save them from plunging down the side of which will hardly be affected will appear in the sequel of this paragraph which i shall narrate just as as it transpired i remember a camp meeting in south carolina for which i embarked in a steamboat at charleston and having been five or six hours on the water we at last arrived at the place of hearing where was a very great concourse of people who were no doubt collected together to hear the word of god that some had collected barely as spectators to the scene i will not here pretend to doubt however that is left to themselves and their god myself and boat companions having been there a little while we were all called up to hear i among the rest went up and took my seat being seated i fixed myself in a complete position to hear the word of my saviour and to receive such as i thought was authenticated by the holy scriptures but to my no ordinary astonishment our reverend gentleman got up and told us colored people that slaves must be obedient to their masters must do their duty to their masters or be whipped the whip was made for the backs of fools etc here i paused for a moment to give the world time to consider what was my surprise to hear such preaching from a minister of my master whose very gospel is that of peace and not of blood and whips as this pretended preacher tried to make us believe what the american preachers can think of us i ver this day before my god i have never been able to define they have newspapers and monthly periodicals which they receive in continuous succession but on the pages of which you will scarcely ever find a paragraph respecting slavery which is ten thousand times more injurious to this country than all the other evils put together and which will be the final overthrow of its government unless something is very speedily done for their cup is nearly full perhaps they will laugh at or make light of this but i tell you americans that unless you speedily alter your course you and your country are gone for god almighty will tear up the very face of the earth will not that very remarkable passage of scripture be fulfilled on christian americans hear it americans quote he that is unjust let him be unjust still and he which is filthy let him be filthy still and he that is righteous let him be righteous still and he that is holy let him be holy still End of quote i hope that the americans may hear but i am afraid that they have done us so much injury and are so firm in the belief that our creator made us to be an inheritance to them for ever that their hearts will be hardened so that their destruction may be sure this language perhaps is too harsh for the americans delicate ears but o oh, americans americans i warn you in the name of the lord whether you will hear or forbear to repent and reform or you are ruined do you think that our blood is hidden from the lord because you can hide it from the rest of the world by sending out missionaries and by your charitable deeds to the greeks irish etc will he not publish your secret crimes on the house-top even here in boston pride and prejudice have got to such a pitch that in the very houses erected to the lord they have built little places for the reception of colored people where they must sit during meeting or keep away from the house of god and the preachers say nothing about it 
much less go into the hedges and highways or seeking the lost sheep of the house of israel and try to bring them in to their lord and master there are not a more wretched ignorant miserable and abject set of beings in all the world than the blacks in the southern and western sections of this country under tyrants and devils the preachers of america cannot see them but they can send out missionaries to convert the heathens notwithstanding americans unless you speedily alter your course of proceeding if god almighty does not stop you i say it in his name you may go on and do as you please for ever both in time and eternity never fear any evil at all addition the preachers and people of the united states form societies against freemasonry and intemperance and write against sabbath breaking sabbath males infidelity etc etc but the fountain-head footnote slavery and oppression end of footnote compared with which all those other evils are comparatively nothing and from the bloody and murderous head of which they receive no trifling support is hardly noticed by the americans this is a fair illustration of the state of society in this country it shows what a bearing avarice has upon a people when they are nearly given up by the lord to a hard heart and a reprobate mind in consequence of afflicting their fellow-creatures god suffers some to go on until they are ruined for ever will it be the case with the whites of the united states of america we hope not we would not wish to see them destroyed notwithstanding they have and do now treat us more cruel than any people have treated another on this earth since it came from the hands of its creator with the exceptions of the french and the dutch they treat us nearly as bad as the americans of the united states the will of god must however in spite of us be done the english are the best friends the colored people have upon earth though they have oppressed us a little and have colonies now in the west indies which oppress us sorely yet notwithstanding they the english have done one hundred times more for the amelioration of our condition than all the other nations of the earth put together the blacks cannot but respect the english as a nation notwithstanding they have treated us a little cruel there is no intelligent black man who knows anything but esteems a real englishman let him see him in what part of the world he will for they are the greatest benefactors we have upon earth we have here and there in other nations good friends but as a nation the english are our friends how can the preachers and people of america believe the bible does it teach them any distinction on account of a man's colour hearken americans to the injunctions of our lord and master to his humble followers and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world amen end of quotation i declare that the very face of these injunctions appear to be of god and not of man they do not show the slightest degree of distinction quote, go ye therefore says my divine master and teach all nations or in other words all people baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost end of quotation do you understand the above americans we are a people notwithstanding many have you doubted you have the bible in your hands with this very injunction have you been to africa teaching the inhabitants thereof the words of the lord jesus quote, baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost end of quote. have you not on the contrary entered among us and learnt us the art of throat-cutting by setting us to fight one against another to take each other as prisoners of war and sell to you for small bits of calicoes old swords knives etc to make slaves for you and your children this being done have you not brought us among you in chains and handcuffs like brutes and treated us with all the cruelties and rigour your ingenuity could invent consistent with the laws of your country which for the blacks are tyrannical enough can the american preachers appeal unto god the maker and the searcher of hearts and tell them with the bible in their hands that they make no distinction on account of men's colour can they say o god thou knowest all things thou knowest that we make no distinction between thy creatures to whom we have to preach thy word let them answer the lord and if they cannot do it in of their affirmative have they not departed from the lord jesus christ their master but some may say that they never had or were in possession of a religion which made no distinction and of course they could not have departed from it i ask you then in the name of the lord of what kind can your religion be can it be that which was preached by our lord jesus christ from heaven i believe you cannot be so wicked as to tell him that his gospel was that of distinction what can the american preachers and people take god to be do they believe his words if they do do they believe that he will be mocked or do they believe because they are whites and we blacks that god will have respect to them did not god make us all as it seemed best to himself 
what right then has one of us to despise another and to treat him cruel on account of his colour which none but the god who made it can alter can there be a greater absurdity in nature and particularly in a free republican country but the americans having introduced slavery among them their hearts have become almost seared as with an hot iron and god has nearly given them up to believe a lie in preference to the truth and i am awfully afraid that pride prejudice avarice and blood will before long prove the final ruin of this happy republic or land of liberty can anything be a greater mockery of religion than the way in which it is conducted by the americans it appears as though they are bent only on daring god almighty to do his best they chain and can cuff us and our children and drive us around the country like brutes and go into the house of the god of justice to return him thanks for having aided them in their infernal cruelties inflicted upon us will the lord suffer this people to go on much longer taking his holy name in vain will he not stop them preachers and all o oh, americans americans i call god i call angels i call men to witness that your destruction is at hand and will be speedily consummated unless you repent End of section four section five of walker's appeal by david walker this librivox recording is in the public domain article four our wretchedness in consequence of the colonizing plan part one my dearly beloved brethren this is a scheme on which so many able writers together with that very judicious colored baltimorean have commented that i feel my delicacy about touching it but as i am compelled to do the will of my master i declare i will give you my sentiments upon it previous however to giving my sentiments either for or against it i shall give that of mr henry clay together with that of mr elias b caldwell esq of the district of columbia as extracted from the national intelligencer by dr tory author of a series of essays on morals and the diffusion of useful knowledge at a meeting which was convened in the district of columbia for the express purpose of agitating the subject of colonizing us in some part of the world mr clay was called to the chair and having been seated a little while he rose and spake in substance as follows says he quote, that class of the mixed population of our country colored people was peculiarly situated they neither enjoyed the immunities of freemen nor were they subjected to the incapacities of slaves but partook in some degree of the qualities of both from their condition and the unconquerable prejudices resulting from their colour they never could amalgamate with the free whites of this country it was desirable therefore as it respected them and the residue of the population of the country to drain them off various schemes of colonization had been thought of and a part of our continent it was supposed by some might furnish a suitable establishment for them but for his part mr c said he had a decided preference for some part of the coast of africa there ample provision might be made for the colony itself and it might be rendered instrumental to the introduction into that extensive quarter of the globe of the arts civilization and christianity End of quote. here i asked mr clay what kind of christianity did he mean such as they have among the americans distinction whip blood and oppression i pray the lord jesus christ to forbid it quote, there said he was a peculiar a moral fitness in restoring them to the land of their fathers and if instead of the evils and sufferings which we had been the innocent cause of inflicting upon 
the inhabitants of africa we can transmit to her the blessings of our arts our civilization and our religion may we not hope that america will extinguish a great portion of that moral debt which she has contracted to that unfortunate continent can there be a nobler cause than that which whilst it proposes etc you know what this means contemplates the spreading of the arts of civilized life and the possible redemption from ignorance and barbarism of a benighted quarter of the globe End of quote. before i proceed any further i solicit your notice brethren to the foregoing part of mr clay's speech in which he says look above quote, and if instead of the evils and sufferings which we have been the innocent cause of inflicting end of quote, etc what this very learned statesman could have been thinking about when he said in his speech quote, we had been the innocent cause of inflicting etc i have never been able to conceive are mr clay and the rest of the americans innocent of the blood and groans of our fathers and us their children every individual may plead innocence if he pleases but god will before long separate the innocent from the guilty unless something is speedily done which i suppose will hardly be so that their destruction may be sure o oh, americans let me tell you in the name of the lord it will be good for you if you listen to the voice of the holy ghost but if you do not you are ruined some of you are good men but the will of my god must be done those avaricious and ungodly tyrants among you i am awfully afraid will drag down the vengeance of god upon you when god almighty commences his battle on the continent of america for the oppression of his people tyrants will wish they never were born but to return to mr clay whence i digressed he says quote, it was proper and necessary distinctly to state that he understood it constituted no part of the object of this meeting to touch or agitate in the slightest degree a delicate question connected with another portion of the colored population of our country it was not proposed to deliberate upon or consider at all any question of emancipation or that which was connected with the abolition of slavery it was upon that condition alone he was sure that many gentlemen from the south and the west whom he saw present had attended or could be expected to co-operate it was upon that condition only that he himself had attended End of quote that is to say to fix a plan to get those of the colored people who are said to be free away from among those of our brethren whom they unjustly hold in bondage so that they may be enabled to keep them the more secure in ignorance and wretchedness to support them and their children and consequently they would have the more obedient slaves for if the free are allowed to stay among the slaves they will have intercourse together and of course the free will learn the slaves bad habits by teaching them that they are men as well as other people and certainly ought and must be free i presume that every intelligent man of color must have some idea of mr henry clay originally of virginia but now of kentucky they know too perhaps whether he is a friend or a foe to the colored citizens of this country and of the world this gentleman according to his own words had been highly favored and blessed of the lord though he did not acknowledge it but to the contrary he acknowledged men for all the blessings with which god had favored him at a public dinner given him at fowler's garden lexington kentucky he delivered a public speech to a very large concourse of people in the concluding clause of which he says quote, and now my friends and fellow-citizens i cannot part from you on possibly the last occasion of my ever publicly addressing you without reiterating the expression of my thanks from a heart overflowing with gratitude 
i came among you now more than thirty years ago an orphan boy penniless a stranger to you all without friends without the favour of the great you took me up cherished me protected me honoured me you have constantly poured upon me a bold and unabated stream of innumerable favours time which wears out everything has increased and strengthened your affection for me when i seemed deserted by almost the whole world and assailed by almost every tongue and pen and press you have fearlessly and manfully stood by me with unsurpassed zeal and undiminished friendship when i felt as if i should sink beneath the storm of abuse and detraction which was violently raging around me i found myself upheld and sustained by your encouraging voices and approving smiles i have doubtless committed many faults and indiscretions over which you have thrown the broad mantle of your charity but i can say and in the presence of god and in this assembled multitude i will say that i have honestly and faithfully served my country that i have never wronged it and that however unprepared i lament that i am to appear in the divine presence on other accounts i invoke the stern justice of his judgment on my public conduct without the slightest apprehension of his displeasure End of quote. hearken to this statesman indeed but no philanthropist whom god sent into kentucky an orphan boy penniless and friendless where he not only gave him a plenty of friends and the comforts of life but raised him almost to the very highest honour in the nation where his great talents with which the lord has been pleased to bless him has gained for him the affection of a great portion of the people with whom he had to do but what has this gentleman done for the lord after having done so much for him the lord has a suffering people whose moans and groans at his feet for deliverance from oppression and wretchedness pierce the very throne of heaven and call loudly on the god of justice to be revenged now what this gentleman who is so highly favoured of the lord has done to liberate those miserable victims of oppression shall appear before the world by his letters to mr gallatin and Thoy, extraordinary minister plenipotentiary to great britain dated june nineteen eighteen twenty six though mr clay was writing for the states yet nevertheless it appears from the very face of his letters to that gentleman that he was as anxious if not more so to get those free people and sink them into wretchedness as his constituents for whom he wrote the americans of north and of south america including the west india islands no trifling portion of whom were for stealing murdering etc compelled to flee from europe to save their necks or banishment have effected their escape to this continent where god blessed them with all the comforts of life he gave them a plenty of everything calculated to do them good not satisfied with this however they wanted slaves and wanted us for their slaves who belonged to the holy ghost and no other who we shall have to serve instead of tyrants i say the americans want us the property of the holy ghost to serve them but there is a day fast approaching when unless there is a universal repentance on the part of the whites which will scarcely take place they have got to be so hardened in consequence of our blood and so wise in their own conceit to be plain and candid with you americans i say that the day is fast approaching when there will be a greater time on the continent of america than ever was witnessed upon this earth since it came from the land of its creator some of you have done us so much injury that you will never be able to repent your cup must be filled you want us for your slaves and shall have enough of us god is just who will give you your fill of us but mr henry clay speaking to mr gallatin respecting colored people who had effected their escape from the united states or to them hell upon earth to the hospitable shores of canada from whence it would cause more than the lives of the americans to get them to plunge into wretchedness he says quote, the general assembly of kentucky one of the states which is most affected by the escape of slaves into upper canada has again at their session which has just terminated invoked the interposition of the general government in the treaty which has been recently concluded with the united mexican states and which is now under the consideration of the senate provision is made for the restoration of fugitive slaves as it appears from your statements of what passed on that subject with the british plenipotentiaries that they admitted the correctness of the principle of restoration it is hoped that you will be able to succeed in making satisfactory arrangements End of quote. 
there are a series of these letters all of which are to the same amount some however presenting a face more of his own responsibility i wonder what would this gentleman think if the lord should give him among the rest of his blessings enough of slaves could he blame any other being but himself do we not belong to the holy ghost what business has he or anybody else to be sending letters about the world respecting us can we not go where we want to as well as other people only if we obey the voice of the holy ghost this gentleman mr henry clay not only took an active part in this colonizing plan but was absolutely chairman of a meeting held at washington the twenty first day of december eighteen sixteen to agitate the subject of colonizing us in africa now i appeal and ask every citizen of these united states and of the world both white and black who has any knowledge of mr clay's public labor for these states i want you candidly to answer the lord who sees the secrets of our hearts do you believe that mr henry clay late secretary of state and now in kentucky is a friend to the blacks further that his personal interest extends is it not his greatest object and glory upon earth to sink us into miseries and wretchedness by making slaves of us to work his plantation to enrich him and his family does he care a pinch of snuff about africa whether it remains a land of pagans under blood or of christians so long as he gets enough of her sons and daughters to dig up gold and silver for him if he had no slaves and could obtain them in no other way if it were not repugnant to the laws of his country which prohibit the importation of slaves which act was indeed more through apprehension than humanity would he not try to import a few from africa to work his farm would he work in the hot sun to earn his bread if he could make an african work for nothing particularly if he could keep him in ignorance and make him believe that god made him for nothing else but to work for him he is not mr clay a white man and too delicate to work in the hot sun was he not made by his creator to sit in the shade and make the blacks work without remuneration for their services to support him and his family i have been for some time taking notice of this man's speeches and public writings but never to my knowledge have i seen anything in his writings which insisted on the emancipation of slavery which has almost ruined his country thus we see the depravity of men's hearts when in pursuit only of gain particularly when they oppress their fellow-creatures to obtain that gain god suffers some to go on until they are lost for ever this same mr clay wants to know what he has done to merit the disapprobation of the american people in a public speech delivered by him he asked did i involve my country in an unnecessary war to merit the censure of the americans did i bring obloquy upon the nation or the people with whom i represented did i ever lose any opportunity to advance the fame honor and prosperity of this state and the union End of quote. how astonishing it is for a man who knows so much about god and his ways as mr clay to ask such frivolous questions does he believe that a man of his talents and standing in the midst of a people will get along unnoticed by the penetrating and all-seeing eye of god who is continually taking cognizance of the hearts of men is not god against him for advocating the murderous cause of slavery if god is against him what can the americans together with the whole world do for him can they save him from the hand of the lord jesus christ i shall now pass and review the speech of mr elias b caldwell esq of the district of columbia extracted from the same page on which mr clay's will be found mr caldwell giving his opinion respecting us and at that ever memorable meeting he says Quote, the more you improve the condition of these people the more you cultivate their minds the more miserable you make them in their present state you give them a higher relish for those privileges which they can never attain and turn what we intend for a blessing into a curse End of quote. let me ask this benevolent man what he means by a blessing intended for us did he mean sinking us and our children into ignorance and wretchedness to support him and his family what he meant will appear evident and obvious to the most ignorant in the world see mr caldwell's intended blessings for us o oh my lord no said he if they must remain in their present situation keep them in the lowest state of degradation and ignorance the nearer you bring them to the condition of brutes the better chance do you give them of possessing their apathy End of quote. Here i pause to give breath having laboured to extract the above clause of this gentleman's speech at that colonizing meeting 
i presume that everybody knows the meaning of the word apathy if any do not let him get sheridan's dictionary in which he will find it explained in full i solicit the attention of the world to the foregoing part of mr caldwell's speech that they may see what man will do with his fellow-men when he has them under his feet to what length will not man go in iniquity when given up to a hard heart and reprobate mind in consequence of blood and depression the last clause of this speech which was written in a very artful manner and which will be taken for the speech of a friend without close examination and deep penetration i shall now present he says quote, surely americans ought to be the last people on earth to advocate such slavish doctrines to cry peace and contentment to those who are deprived of the privileges of civil liberty they who have so largely partaken of its blessings who know so well how to estimate its value ought to be among the foremost to extend it to others End of quote. the real sense and meaning of the last part of mr caldwell's speech is get the free people of colour away to africa from among the slaves where they may at once be blessed and happy and those who we hold in slavery will be contented to rest in ignorance and wretchedness to dig up gold and silver for us and for our children men have indeed got to be so cunning these days that it would take the eye of a solomon to penetrate and find them out addition our dear redeemer said quote, therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops how obviously this declaration of our lord has been shown among the americans of the united states they have hitherto passed among some nations who do not know anything about their internal concerns for the most enlightened humane charitable and merciful people upon earth when at the same time they treat us the colored people secretly more cruel and unmerciful than any other nation upon earth it is a fact that in our southern and western states there are millions who hold us in chains or in slavery whose greatest object and glory is centred in keeping us sunk in the most profound ignorance and stupidity to make us work without remuneration for our services many of whom if they catch a coloured person whom they hold in unjust ignorance and slavery and degradation to them and their children with a book in his hand will beat him nearly to death i heard a wretch in the state of north carolina said that if any man would teach a black person whom he held in slavery to spell read or write he would prosecute him to the very extent of the law said the ignorant wretch footnote it is a fact that in all our slaveholding states in the countries there are thousands of the whites who are almost as ignorant in comparison as horses the most they know is to beat the colored people which some of them shall have their hearts full of yet in the footnote a nigger ought not to have any more sense than enough to work for his master End of quote. may i not ask to fatten the wretch and his family these and similar cruelties these christians have been for hundreds of years inflicting on our fathers and us in the dark god has however very recently published some of their secret crimes on the housetop that the world may gaze on their christianity and see of what kind it is composed georgia for instance god has completely shown to the world the christianity among its white inhabitants a law has recently passed the legislature of this republican state georgia prohibiting all free or slave persons of color from learning to read or write another law has passed the republican house of delegates but not the senate in virginia to prohibit all persons of color free and slave from learning to read or write and even to hinder them from meeting together in order to worship our maker now i solemnly appeal to the most skilful historians in the world and all those who are mostly acquainted with the histories of the antediluvians and of sodom and gomorrah to show me a parallel of barbarity christians christians i dare you to show me a parallel of cruelties in the annals of heathens or of devils with those of ohio virginia and of georgia know the world that these things were before done in the dark or in a corner under a garb of humanity and religion god has however taken off the hig leaf covering and made them expose themselves on the housetop i tell you that god works in many ways his wonders to perform he will unless they repent make them expose themselves enough more yet to the world 
see the acts of the christians in florida south carolina and kentucky was it not for the reputation of the house of my lord and master i would mention here an act of cruelty inflicted a few days since on a black man by the white christians in the park street church in this city which is almost enough to make demons themselves quake and tremble in their fiery habitations o oh, my lord how refined in iniquity the whites have got to be in consequence of our blood footnote the blood of our fathers who have been murdered by the whites and the groans of our brethren who are now held in cruel ignorance wretchedness and slavery by them cry aloud to the maker of heaven and of earth against the whole continent of america for redresses End of footnote. what kind oh what kind of christianity can be found this day in all the earth i write without the fear of man i am writing for my god and fear none but himself they may put me to death if they choose i fear and esteem a good man however let him be black or white i forbear to comment on the cruelties inflicted on this black man by the whites in the park street meeting-house i will leave it in the dark but i declare that the atrocity is really to heaven daring and infernal that i must say that god has commenced a course of exposition among the americans and the glorious and heavenly work will continue to progress until they learn to do justice End of section five. section six of walker's appeal by david walker this librivox recording is in the public domain article four part two extract from the speech of mr john randolph of roanoke said he quote, it had been properly observed by the chairman as well as by the gentlemen from this district meaning messrs clay and caldwell that there was nothing in the proposition submitted to consideration which in the smallest degree touches another very important and delicate question which ought to be left as much out of view as possible negro slavery footnote nigger is a word derived from the latin which was used by the old romans to designate inanimate beings which were black such as soot pot wood house etc also animals which they considered inferior to the human species as a black horse cow hog bird dog etc the white americans have applied this term to africans by way of reproach for our colour to aggravate and heighten our miseries because they have their feet on our throats End of footnote. there is no fear mr r said that this proposition would alarm the slaveholders they had been accustomed to think seriously of the subject there was a popular work on agriculture by john taylor of carolina which was widely circulated and much confided in in virginia in that book much read because coming from a practical man this description of people referring to us half free ones were pointed out as a great evil they had indeed been held up as the greater bugbear to every man who feels an inclination to emancipate his slaves not to create in the bosom of his country so great a nuisance if a place could be provided for their reception and a mode of sending them hence there were hundreds nay thousands of citizens who would by manumitting their slaves relieve themselves from the cares attendant on their possession the great slaveholder mr r said was frequently a mere sentry at his own door bound to stay on his plantation to see that his slaves were properly treated etc mr r concluded by saying that he had thought it necessary to make these remarks being a slaveholder himself to show that so far from being connected with abolition of slavery the measure proposed would prove one of the greatest securities to enable the master to keep in possession his own property End of quote. here is a demonstrative proof of a plan got up by a gang of slaveholders to select the free people of color from among the slaves that our more miserable brethren may be the better secured in ignorance and wretchedness to work their farms and dig their mines and thus go 
on enriching the christians with their blood and groans what our brethren could have been thinking about who have left their native land and home and gone away to africa i am unable to say this country is as much ours as it is the whites whether they will admit it now or not they will see and believe it by and by they tell us about the prejudice what have we to do with it their prejudices will be obliged to fall like lightning to the ground in succeeding generations not however with the will and consent of all the whites for some will be obliged to hold on to the old adage these the blacks are not men but were made to be an inheritance to us and our children for ever i hope the residue of the colored people will stand still and see the salvation of god and the miracle which he will work for our delivery from wretchedness under the christians addition if any of us see fit to go away go to those who have been for many years and are now our greatest earthly friends and benefactors the english if not so go to our brethren the haitians who according to their word are bound to protect and comfort us the americans say that we are ungrateful but i ask them for heaven's sake what should we be grateful to them for for murdering our fathers and mothers or do they wish us to return thanks to them for chaining and handcuffing us branding us and cramming fire down our throats or for keeping us in slavery and beating us nearly or quite to death to make us work in ignorance and miseries to support them and their families they certainly think that we are a gang of fools those among them who have volunteered their services for our redemption though we are unable to compensate them for their labours we nevertheless thank them from the bottom of our hearts and have our eyes steadfastly fixed upon them and their labours of love for god and man but do slaveholders think that we thank them for keeping us in miseries and taking our lives by the inches before i proceed further with this scheme i shall give an extract from the letter of that truly reverend divine bishop allen of philadelphia respecting this trick at the instance of the editor of the freedom's journal he says dear sir i've been for several years trying to reconcile my mind to the colonizing of africans in liberia but there have always been and there still remain great and insurmountable objections against the scheme we are an unlettered people brought up in ignorance not one in a hundred can read or write not one in a thousand has a liberal education is there any fitness for such to be sent into a far country among heathens to convert or civilize them when they themselves are neither civilized or christianized see the great bulk of the poor ignorant africans in this country exposed to every temptation before them all for the want of their morals being refined by education and proper attendance paid unto them by their owners or those who had the charge of them it is said by the southern slaveholders that the more ignorant they can bring up the africans the better slaves they make go and come is there any fitness for such people to be colonized in a far country to be their own rulers can we not discern the project of sending the free people of color away from their country is it not for the interest of the slaveholders to select the free people of color out of the different states and send them to liberia will it not make their slaves uneasy to see free men of color enjoying liberty it is against the law in some of the southern states that a person of color should receive an education under a severe penalty colonizationists speak of america being first colonized but is there any comparison between the two america was colonized by as wise judicious and educated men as the world afforded william penn did not want for learning and wisdom or intelligence if all the people in europe and america were as ignorant and in the same situation as our brethren what would become of the world where would be the principle or piety that would govern the people we were stolen from our mother country and brought here we have tilled the ground and made fortunes for thousands and still they are not weary of our services but they who stay to till the ground must be slaves is there not land enough in america or corn enough in egypt why should they send us into a far country to die see the thousands of foreigners emigrating to america every year and if there be ground sufficient for them to cultivate and bread for them to eat why would they wish to send the first tillers of the land away africans have made fortunes for thousands who are yet unwilling to part with their services but the free must be sent away and those who remain must be slaves i have no doubt that there are many good men who do not see as i do and who are for sending us to liberia but they have not duly considered the subject 
they are not men of colour this land which we have watered with our tears and our blood is now our mother country and we are well satisfied to stay where wisdom abounds and the gospel is free richard allen bishop of the african methodist episcopal church in the united states i have given you my brethren an extract verbatim from the letter of that godly man as you may find it on the aforementioned page of freedom's journal i know that thousands and perhaps millions of my brethren in these states have never heard of such a man as bishop allen a man whom god many years ago raised up among his ignorant and degraded brethren to preach jesus christ and him crucified to them who notwithstanding had to wrestle against principalities and the powers of darkness to diffuse that gospel with which he was endowed among his brethren but who having overcome the combined powers of devils and wicked men has under god planted a church among us which will be as durable as the foundation of the earth on which it stands richard allen o oh my god the bare recollection of the labours of this man and his ministers among his deplorably wretched brethren rendered so by the whites to bring them to a knowledge of the god of heaven fills my soul with all those very high emotions which would take the pen of an addison to portray it is impossible my brethren for me to say much in this work respecting that man of god when the lord shall raise up colored historians in succeeding generations to present the crimes of this nation to the then gazing world the holy ghost will make them do justice to the name of bishop Allen of philadelphia suffice it for me to say that the name of this very man richard allen though now in obscurity and degradation will notwithstanding stand on the pages of history among the greatest divines who have lived since the apostolic age and among the africans bishop allen's will be entirely pre-eminent my brethren search after the character and exploits of this godly man among his ignorant and miserable brethren to bring them to a knowledge of the truth as it is in our master consider upon the tyrants and false christians against whom he had to contend in order to get access to his brethren see him and his ministers in the states of new york new jersey pennsylvania delaware and maryland carrying the gladsome tidings of free and full salvation to the colored people tyrants and false christians however would not allow him to penetrate far into the south for fear that he would awaken some of his ignorant brethren whom they held in wretchedness and misery for fear i say it that he would awaken and bring them to a knowledge of their maker o oh, my master my master i cannot but think upon christian americans what kind of people can they be will not those who were burnt up in sodom and gomorrah rise up in judgment against christian americans with the bible in their hands and condemn them will not the scribes and pharisees of jerusalem who had nothing but the laws of moses and the prophets to go by rise up in judgment against christian americans and condemn them footnote i mean those whose labours for the good or rather destruction of jerusalem and the jews ceased before our lord entered the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers End of footnote. who in addition to these have a revelation from jesus christ the son of the living god in fine will not the antediluvians together with the whole heathen world of antiquity rise up in judgment against christian americans and condemn them the christians of europe and america go to africa bring us away and throw us into the seas and in other ways murder us as they would wild beasts the antediluvians and heathens never dreamed of such barbarities now the christians believe because they have a name to live while they are dead but that god will overlook such things but if he does not deceive them it will be because he has overlooked it sure enough but to return to this godly man bishop allen i do hereby openly affirm it to the world that he has done more in a spiritual sense for his ignorant and wretched brethren than any other man of colour has since the world began and as for the greater part of the whites it has hitherto been their greatest object and glory to keep us ignorant of our maker so as to make us believe that we were made to be slaves to them and their children to dig up gold and silver for them it is notorious that not a few professing christians among the whites who profess to love our lord and saviour jesus christ have assailed this man and laid all the obstacles in his way they possibly could consistent with their profession and what for why their course of proceeding and his clashed exactly together they trying their best to keep us ignorant that we might be the better and more obedient slaves while he on the other hand doing his very best to enlighten us and teach us a knowledge of the lord and i am sorry that i have it to say that many of our brethren have joined in with our oppressors whose dearest objects are only to keep us ignorant and miserable against this man to stay his hand 
however they have kept us in so much ignorance that many of us know no better than to fight against ourselves and by that means strengthen the hands of our natural enemies to rivet their infernal chains of slavery upon us and our children i have several times called the white americans our natural enemies i shall here define my meaning of the phrase shem ham and japheth together with their father noah and wives i believe were not natural enemies to each other when the ark rested after the flood upon mount ararat in asia they eight were all the people which could be found alive in all the earth in fact if scriptures be true which i believe are there were no other living men in all the earth notwithstanding some ignorant creatures hesitate not to tell us that we the blacks are the seed of cain and the murderer of his brother abel but wherever or of whom those ignorant and avaricious wretches could have got their information i am unable to declare did they receive it from the bible i have searched the bible as well as they if i am not it was well learned as they are and have never seen a verse which testifies whether we are the seed of cain or of abel yet those men tell us that we are the seed of cain and that god put a dark stain upon us that we might he be known as their slaves now i ask those avaricious and ignorant wretches who act more like the seed of cain by murdering the whites or the blacks how many vessel loads of human beings have the blacks thrown into the seas how many thousand souls have the blacks murdered in cold blood to make them work in wretchedness and ignorance to support them and their families footnote how many millions souls of the human family have the blacks beat nearly to death to keep them from learning to read the word of god and from writing and telling lies about them and by holding them up to the world as a tribe of talking apes void of intellect incapable of learning etc End of footnote. however let us be the seed of cain harry dick or tom god will show the whites what we are yet i say from the beginning i do not think that we were natural enemies to each other but the whites having made us so wretched by subjecting us to slavery and having murdered so many millions of us in order to make us work for them and out of devilishness and they taking our wives whom we love as we do ourselves our mothers who bore the pains of death to give us birth our fathers and dear little children and ourselves and strip and beat us one before the other chain handcuff and drag us about like rattlesnakes shoot us down like wild bears before each other's faces to make us submissive to and work to support them and their families they the whites know well if we are men and there is a secret monitor in their hearts which tells them we are they know i say if we are men and see them treating us in the manner they do that there can be nothing in our hearts but death alone for them notwithstanding we may appear cheerful when we see them murdering our dear mothers and wives because we cannot help ourselves man in all ages and all nations of the earth is the same man is a peculiar creature he is the image of his god though he may be subjected to the most wretched condition upon earth yet the spirit and feeling which constitute the creature man can never be entirely erased from his breast because the god who made him after his own image planted it in his heart he cannot get rid of it the whites knowing this they do not know what to do they know that they have done us so much injury they are afraid that we being men and not brutes will retaliate and woe will be to them therefore that dreadful fear together with an avaricious spirit and the natural love in them to be called masters which term will yet honour them with to their sorrow bring them to the resolve that they will keep us in ignorance and wretchedness as long as they possibly can footnote and still hold us up with indignant as in being incapable of acquiring knowledge see the inconsistency of the assertions of those wretches they beat us inhumanely sometimes almost to death for attempting to inform ourselves by reading the word of our maker and at the same time tell us that we are beings void of intellect how admirably their practices agree with their professions in this case let me cry shame upon you americans for such outrages upon human nature if it were possible for the whites always to keep us ignorant and miserable make us work to enrich them and their children and insult our feelings by representing us as talking apes what would they do but glory honour and praise to heaven's king that the sons and daughters of africa will in spite of all the opposition of their enemies stand forth in all the dignity and glory that is granted by the lord to his creature man End of footnote. and make the best of their time while it lasts consequently they themselves and not us render themselves our natural enemies by treating us so cruel they keep us miserable now and call us their property but some of them will have enough of us by and by their stomachs shall run over with us they want for us for their slaves and shall have us to their fill we are all in the world together 
i said above because we cannot help ourselves these we cannot help the whites murdering our mothers and our wives but this statement is incorrect for we can help ourselves for if we lay aside abject servility and be determined to act like men and not brutes the murders among the whites would be afraid to show their cruel heads but oh my god in sorrow i must say it that my color all over the world have a mean servile spirit they yield in a moment to the whites let them be right or wrong the reason they are able to keep their feet on our throats o oh, my colored brethren all over the world when shall we arise from this death-like apathy and be men you will notice if ever we become men i mean respectable men such as other people are we must exert ourselves to the full for remember that it is the greatest desire and object of the greater part of the whites to keep us ignorant and make us work to support them and their families here now in the southern and western sections of this country there are at least three colored persons for one white why is it that those few weak good-for-nothing whites are able to keep so many able men one of whom can put to flight a dozen whites in wretchedness and misery it shows at once what the blacks are we are ignorant abject servile i mean and the whites know it they know that we are too servile to assert our rights as men or they would not fool with us as they do would they fool with any other people as they do with us no they know too well that they would get themselves ruined why do they not bring the inhabitants of asia to be body servants to them they know they would get their bodies rent and torn from head to foot why do they not get the aborigines of this country to be slaves to them and their children to work their farms and dig their mines they know well that the aborigines of this country or indians would tear them from the earth the indians would not rest day or night they would be up all times of night cutting their cruel throats but my colour some not all are willing to stand still and be murdered by the cruel whites in some of the western islands and over a large part of south america there are six or eight coloured persons for one white footnote for instance in the two states of georgia and south carolina there are perhaps not much short of six or seven hundred thousand persons of colour and if i was a gambling character i would not be afraid to stake down upon the board five cents against ten that there are in the single state of virginia five or six hundred thousand coloured persons four hundred and fifty thousand of whom let them be well equipped for war i would put it against every white person on the whole continent of america why why because i know that the blacks once they get involved in a war had rather die than to live they either kill or be killed the whites know this too which make them quake and tremble to show the world further how servile the coloured people are i will only hold up to view the one island of jamaica as a specimen of, of our meanness in that island there are three hundred and fifty thousand souls of whom fifteen thousand are whites the remainder three hundred and, and thirty five thousand are coloured people and this island is ruled by the white people fifteen thousand ruling and tyrannized over three hundred and thirty five thousand persons o oh, coloured men o oh, coloured men o oh, coloured men look look at this and tell me if we are not abject and servile enough how long o oh, how long my colour shall we be dupes and dogs to the cruel white i only pass jamaica and its inhabitants in review as a specimen to show the world condition of the blacks at this time now coloured people of the whole world I beg you to look at the fifteen thousand white and three hundred and thirty five thousand coloured people in that island and tell me how can the white tyrants of the world but say that we are not men but were made to be slaves and dogs to them and their children for ever why my friends only look at the thing fifteen thousand whites keeping and in wretchedness and degradation three hundred and thirty five thousand these twenty two coloured persons for one white when at the same time an equal number fifteen thousand blacks would almost take the whole of south america because where they go as soldiers to fight death follows in their train End of footnote. why do they not take possession of the places who hinders them it is not the avaricious whites for they are too busily engaged in laying up money derived from the blood and tears of the blacks the fact is they are too servile they love to have masters too well some of our brethren too who seeking more after aggrandizement than the glory of god and the welfare of their brethren join in with our oppressors to ridicule and say all manner of evils falsely against our bishop they think that they are doing great things when they can get in company with the whites to ridicule and make sport of those who are labouring for their good poor ignorant creatures they do not know that the sole aim and object of the whites are only to make fools and slaves of them and put the whip to them and make them work to support them and their families but i do say that no man can well be a despiser of bishop allen for his public labours among us unless he is a despiser of god 
and of righteousness thus we see my brethren the two very opposite positions of those great men who have written respecting this colonizing plan mr clay and his slave-holding party men who are resolved to keep us in eternal wretchedness are also bent upon sending us to liberia while the rev bishop allen and his party men who have their fear of god and the welfare of their brethren at heart the bishop in particular whose labours for the salvation of his brethren are well known to a large part of those who dwell in the united states are completely opposed to the plan and advise us to stay where we are now we have to determine whose advice we will take respecting this all-important matter whether we will adhere to mr clay and his slave-holding party who have always been our oppressors and murderers and who are for colonizing us more through apprehension than humanity or to his godly man who has done so much for our benefit together with the advice of all the good and wise among us and the whites will any of us leave our homes and go to africa i hope not footnote those who are ignorant enough to go to africa the colored people ought to be glad to have them go for if they are ignorant enough to let the whites fool them off to africa they would be no small injury to us if they reside in this country End of footnote. let them commence their attack upon us as they did on our brethren in ohio driving and beating us from our country and my soul for theirs they will have enough of it let no man of us budge one step and let slaveholders come to beat us from our country america is more our country than it is the whites we have enriched it with our blood and tears the greatest riches in all america have arisen from our blood and tears and will they drive us from our property and homes which we have earned with our blood they must look sharp or this very thing will bring swift destruction upon them the americans have got so fat on our blood and groans that they have almost forgotten god of armies but let them go on End of section six. section seven of walker's appeal by david walker this librivox recording is in the public domain article four part three addition i will give here a very imperfect list of the cruelties inflicted on us by the enlightened christians of america first no trifling portion of them will beat us nearly to death if they find us on our knees praying to god they hinder us from going to hear the word of god they keep us sunk in ignorance and will not let us learn to read the word of god nor write if they find us with a book of any description in our hand they will beat us nearly to death they are so afraid we will learn to read and enlighten our dark and benighted minds they will not suffer us to meet together to worship the god who made us they brand us with hot iron they cram bolts of fire down our throats they cut us as they do horses bulls or hogs they crop our ears and sometimes cut off bits of our tongues they chain and handcuff us and while in that miserable and wretched condition beat us with cowhides and clubs they keep us half naked and starve us sometimes nearly to death under their infernal whips or lashes which some of them shall have enough of yet they put on us fifty sixes and chains and make us work in that cruel situation and in sickness under lashes to support them and their families they keep us three or four hundred feet underground working in their mines night and day to dig up gold and silver to enrich them and their children they keep us in the most death-like ignorance by keeping us from all source of information and call us who are free men and next to the angels of god their property they make us fight and murder each other many of us being ignorant not knowing any better they take us being ignorant and put us as drivers one over the other and make us afflict each other as bad as they themselves afflict us and to crown the whole of this catalogue of cruelties they tell us that we the blacks are an inferior race of beings incapable of self-government we would be injurious to society and ourselves if tyrants should loose their unjust hold on us that if we were free we would not work but would live on plunder or theft that we are the meanest and laziest set of beings in the world that they are obliged to keep us in bondage to do us good that we are satisfied to rest in slavery to them and their children that we ought not to be set free in america but ought to be sent away to africa that if we were to set free in america we would involve the country in a civil war which assertion is altogether at variance with our feeling or design for we ask them for nothing but the rights of man viz for them to set us free and treat us like men and there will be no danger for we will love and respect them and protect our country but cannot conscientiously do these things until they treat us like men how cunning slaveholders think they are how much like the king of egypt who after he saw plainly that god was determined to bring out his people in spite of him and his as powerful as they were he was willing that moses aaron and the elders of israel but not all the people should go and serve the lord 
but god deceived him as he will christian americans unless they are very cautious how they move what would have become of the united states of america was it not for those among the whites who not in words barely but in truth and in deed love and fear the lord our lord and master said whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me it were better for him that a millstone were hanging about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea but the americans with this very threatening of the lords not only beat his little ones among the africans but many of them they put to death or murder now the avaricious americans think that the lord jesus christ will let them off because his words are no more than the words of a man in fact many of them are so avaricious and ignorant that they do not believe in our lord and saviour jesus christ tyrants may think they are so skilful in state affairs is the reason that the government is preserved but i tell you that this country would have been given up long ago was it not for the lovers of the lord they are indeed the salt of the earth remove the people of god among the whites from this land of blood and it will stand until they cleverly get out of the way i adapt the language of the rev mr s e cornish of new york editor of the rights of all and say quote, any colored man of common intelligence who gives his countenance and influence to that colony further than its missionary object and interest extend should be considered as a traitor to his brethren and discarded by every respectable man of color and every member of that society however pure his motive whatever may be his religious character and moral worth should in his efforts to remove the colored population from their rightful soil the land of their birth and nativity be considered as acting gratuitously unrighteous and cruel end of quote. let me make an appeal brethren to your hearts for your cordial cooperation in the circulation of the rights of all among us the utility of such a vehicle if rightly conducted cannot be estimated i hope that the well informed among us may see the absolute necessity of their cooperation in its universal spread among us if we should let it go down never let us undertake anything of the kind again but give up at once and say that we are really so ignorant and wretched that we cannot do anything at all as far as i have seen the writings of its editor i believe he is not seeking to fill his pockets with money but as the welfare of his brethren truly at heart such men brethren ought to be supported by us but to return to the colonizing trick it will be well for me to notice here at once that i do not mean indiscriminately to condemn all the members and advocates of this scheme for i believe that there are some friends to the sons of africa who are labouring for our salvation not in words only but in truth and in deed who have been drawn into this plan some more by persuasion than anything else while others with humane feelings and lively zeal for our good seeing how much we suffer from the afflictions poured upon us by unmerciful tyrants are willing to enrol their names in anything which they think has for its ultimate end our redemption from wretchedness and miseries such men with a heart truly overflowing with gratitude for their past services and zeal in our cause i humbly beg to examine this plot minutely and see if the end which they have in view will be completely consummated by such a course of procedure our friends who have been imperceptibly drawn into this plot i view with tenderness and would not for the world injure their feelings and have only to hope for the future that they will withdraw themselves from it for i declare to them that the plot is not for the glory of god but on the contrary the perpetuation of slavery in this country which will ruin them and the country for ever unless something is immediately done do the colonizationists think to send us off without first being reconciled to us do they think to bundle us up like brutes and send us off as they did our brethren of the state of ohio footnote the great slaveholder mr john randolph of virginia intimated in one of his great happy and eloquent harangues before the virginia convention that ohio is a slave state by ranking it among other slaveholding states this probably was done by the honorable slaveholder to deter the minds of the ignorant to such i would say that ohio always was and is now a free state that it never was and i do not believe it ever will be a slaveholding state the people i believe though some of them are hard-hearted enough detest slavery too much to admit an evil into their bosom which gnaws into the very vitals and sinews of those who are now in possession of it End of footnote had they not to be reconciled to us or reconcile us to them for the cruelties with which they have inflicted our fathers in us methinks colonizationists think they have a set of brutes to deal with sure enough do they think to drive us from our country and homes 
after having enriched it with our blood and tears and keep back millions of our dear brethren sunk in the most barbarous wretchedness to dig up gold and the silver for them and their children surely the americans must think that we are brutes as some of them have represented us to be they think that we do not feel for our brethren whom they are murdering by the inches but they are dreadfully deceived i acknowledge that there are some deceitful and hypocritical wretches among us who will tell us one thing while they mean another and thus they go on aiding our enemies to oppress themselves and us but i declare this day before my lord and master that i believe there are some true-hearted sons of africa in this land of oppression but pretended liberty who do in reality feel for their suffering brethren who are held in bondage by tyrants some of the advocates of this cunningly devised plot of satan represent us to be the greatest set of cutthroats in the world as though god wants us to take his work out of his hand before he is ready does not vengeance belong to the lord is he not able to repay the americans for their cruelties with which they have afflicted africa's sons and daughters without our interference unless we are ordered it is surprising to think that the americans having the bible in their hands do not believe it are not the hearts of all men in the hands of the god of battles and does he not suffer some in consequence of cruelties to go on until they are irrecoverably lost now what can be more aggravating than for the americans after having treated us so bad to hold us up to the world as such great throat cutters it appears to me as though they are resolved to assail us with every species of affliction that their ingenuity can invent see the african repository and colonial journal from its commencement to the present day see how we are through the medium of that periodical abused and held up by the americans as the greatest nuisance to society and throat cutters in the world but the lord sees their actions americans notwithstanding you have and do continue to treat us more cruel than any heathen nation ever did a people it had subjected to the same condition that you have us now let us reason i mean you of the united states whom i believe god designs to save from destruction if you were here for i declare to you whether you believe it or not that there are some on the continent of america who will never be able to repent god will surely destroy them to show you his disapprobation of the murders they and you have inflicted on us i say let us reason had you not better take our body while you have it in your power and while we are yet ignorant and wretched not knowing but a little give us education and teach us the pure religion of our lord and master which is calculated to make the lion lay down in peace with the lamb and which millions of you have beaten us nearly to death for trying to obtain since we have been among you and thus at once gain our affection while we are ignorant remember americans that we must and shall be free and enlightened as you are will you wait until we shall under god obtain our liberty by the crushing arm of power will it not be dreadful for you i speak americans for your good we must and shall be free i say in spite of you you may do your best to keep us in wretchedness and misery to enrich you and your children but god will deliver us from under you and woe woe will be to you if we have to obtain our freedom by fighting throw away your fears and prejudices then and enlighten us and treat us like men and we will like you more than we do now hate you footnote you are not astonished at my saying we hate you for we if we are men we cannot but hate you where well, you are treating us like dogs End of footnote. and tell us now no more about colonization for america is, is as much our country as it is yours treat us like men and there is no danger but we will all live in peace and happiness together for we are not like you hard-hearted unmerciful and unforgiving what a happy country this will be if the whites will listen what nation under heaven will be able to do anything with us unless god gives us up into its hand but americans i declare to you where you keep us and our children in bondage and treat us like brutes to make us support you and your families we cannot be your friends you do not look for it do you treat us then like men and we will be your friends and there is not a doubt in my mind but that the whole of the past will be sunk into oblivion and we yet under god will become a united and happy people the whites may say it is impossible but remember that nothing is impossible with god the americans may say or do as they please but they have to raise us from the condition of brutes to that of respectable men and to make a national acknowledgment to us for the wrongs they have inflicted on us as unexpected strange and wild as these propositions may to some appear it is no less a fact that unless they are complied with the americans of the united states though they may for a little while escape 
god will yet weigh them in a balance and if they are not superior to other men as they have represented themselves to be he will give them the wretchedness to their very hearts content and now brethren having concluded these four articles i submit them together with my preamble dedicated to the lord for your inspection in language so very simple that the most ignorant who can read it all may easily understand of which you may make the best you possibly can footnote some of my brethren who are sensible do not take an interest in enlightening the minds of our more ignorant brethren respecting this book and in reading it to them just as though they will not have either to stand or fall by what is written in this book do they believe that i would be so foolish as to put out a book of this kind without strict ah, very strict commandments of the lord surely the blacks and whites must think that i am ignorant enough do they think that i would have the audacious wickedness to take the name of my god in vain notice i said in the concluding clause of article three i call god i call angels i call men to witness that the destruction of the americans is at hand and will be speedily consummated unless they repent now i wonder if the world think that i would take the name of god in this way in vain what do they think i take god to be do they suppose that i would trifle with that god who will not have his holy name taken in vain he will show you in the world in due time whether this book is for his glory or written by me through envy to the whites as some have represented End of footnote. should tyrants take it into their heads to emancipate any of you remember that your freedom is your natural right you are men as well as they and instead of returning thanks to them for your freedom return it to the holy ghost who is our rightful owner if they do not want to part with your labours which have enriched them let them keep you in my word for it that god almighty will break their strong band do you believe this my brethren see my address delivered before the general coloured association of massachusetts which may be found in freedom's journal for december twenty eighteen twenty eight see the last clause of that address whether you believe it or not i tell you that god will dash tyrants in combination with devils into atoms and will bring you out from your wretchedness and miseries under these christian people those philanthropists and lovers of the human family who have volunteered their services for redemption from wretchedness have a high claim on our gratitude and we should always view them as our greatest earthly benefactors if any are anxious to ascertain who i am know the world that i am one of the oppressed degraded and wretched sons of africa rendered so by the avaricious and the merciful among the whites if any wish to plunge me into the wretched incapacity of a slave or murder me for the truth know ye that i am in the hand of god and at your disposal i count my life not dear unto me but i am ready to be offered at any moment for what is the use of living when in fact i am dead but remember americans that as miserable wretched degraded and abject as you have made us in preceding and in this generation to support you and your families that some of you whites on the continent of america will yet curse the day that you ever were born you want slaves and you want us for your slaves my colour will yet root some of you out of the very face of the earth you may doubt it if you please i know that thousands will doubt they think they have us so well secured in wretchedness to them and their children that it is impossible for such things to occur footnote why do the slaveholders or tyrants of america and their advocates fight so hard to keep my brethren from receiving and reading my book of appeal to them is it because they treat us so well is it because we are satisfied to rest in slavery to them and their children is it because they are treating us like men by compensating us all over this free country for our labours but why are the americans so very fearfully terrified respecting my book why do they search vessels etc when entering the harbours of tyrannical states to see if any of my books can be found for fear that my brethren will get them to read why i thought the americans proclaimed to the world that they are a happy enlightened humane and christian people all the inhabitants of the country enjoy equal rights america is the asylum for the oppressed of all nations now i ask the americans to see the fearful terror they labour under for fear that my brethren will get my book and read it and tell me if their declaration is true viz if the united states of america is a republican government is this not the most tyrannical unmerciful and cruel government under heaven not excepting the algerines turks and arabs i believe if any candid person would take the trouble to go through the southern and western sections of this country and could have the heart to see the cruelties and afflicted by these christians on us he would say that the algerines turks and arabs treat their dogs a thousand times better than we are treated by the christians 
but perhaps the americans do their very best to keep my brethren from receiving and reading my appeal for fear they will find in it an extract which i made from their declaration of independence which says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal etc 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 if the above are not the causes of the alarm among the americans respecting my book i do not know what to impute it to unless they are possessed of the same spirit with which demetrius the silversmith was possessed however that they may judge whether they are of the same avaricious and godly spirit with that man i will give here an extract from the acts of the apostles chapter nineteen verses twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven and the same time there arose no small stir about that way for a certain man named demetrius a silversmith which made silver shrines for diana brought no small gain unto the craftsmen whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said sirs ye know that by this craft we have our wealth moreover ye see and hear that not alone at the ephesus but almost throughout all asia this paul hath persuaded and turned away much people saying that they be no gods which are made with hands so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught but also that the temple of the great goddess diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all asia and the world worshippeth i pray you americans of north and south america together with the whole european inhabitants of the world i mean slaveholders and their advocates to read and ponder over the above verses in your mind and judge whether or not you are of the infernal spirit with that heathen demetrius the silversmith in fine i beg you to read the whole chapter through carefully End of footnote. so did the antediluvians doubt noah until the day in which the flood came and swept them away so did the sodomites doubt until lot had got out of the city and god rained down fire and brimstone from heaven upon them and burned them up so did the king of egypt doubt the very existence of a god he said quote, who is the lord that i should let israel go End of quote. did he not find to his sorrow who the lord was when he and all his mighty men of war were smothered to death in the red sea so did the romans doubt many of them were really so ignorant that they thought the whole of mankind were made to be slaves to them just as many of the americans think now of my colour but they got dreadfully deceived when men got their eyes opened they made the murderers scamper the way in which they cut their tyrannical throats was not much inferior to the way the romans or murderers served them when they held them in wretchedness and degradation under their feet so would christian americans doubt if god should send an angel from heaven to preach their funeral sermon the fact is the christians having a name to live while they are dead think that god will screen them on that ground see the hundreds and thousands of us that are thrown into the seas by christians and murdered by them in other ways they cram us into their vessel holds and chains and in handcuffs men women and children all together o oh, save us we pray thee thou god of heaven and of earth from the devouring hands of the white christians o thou alpha and omega the beginning and the end enthroned thou art in heaven above surrounded by angels there from whence thou seest the miseries to which we are subject the whites have murdered us o god and kept us ignorant of thee not satisfied with this my lord they throw us in the seas be pleased we pray for jesus sake to save us from their grasp we believe that for thy glory's sake thou wilt deliver us but that thou mayest effect these things thy glory must be sought End of section 7section 8 of walker's appeal by david walker this librivox recording is in the public domain in conclusion in conclusion i ask the candid and unprejudiced of the whole world to search the pages of historians diligently and see if the antediluvians the sodomites the egyptians the babylonians the ninevites the carthaginians the persians the macedonians the greeks the romans the mahometans the jews or devils ever treated a set of human beings as the white christians of america do us the blacks or africans i also ask the attention of the world of mankind to the declaration of these very american people of the united states 
a declaration made july fourth seventeen seventy six it says when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's god entitle them a decent respect for the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life liberty and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes and accordingly all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed but when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism it is their right it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security see your declaration americans do you understand your own language hear your language proclaimed to the world july fourth seventeen seventy six we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life liberty and the pursuit of happiness compare your own language above extracted from your declaration of independence with your cruelties and murders inflicted by your cruel and unmerciful fathers and yourselves on our fathers and on us men who have never given your fathers or you the least provocation hear your language further but when a long train of abuses and usurpation pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism it is their right it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security now americans i ask you candidly was your sufferings under great britain one hundredth part as cruel and tyrannical as you have rendered ours under you some of you no doubt believe that we will never throw off your murderous government and quote, provide new guards for our future security end of quote. if satan has made you believe it will he not deceive you footnote the lord has not taught the americans that we will not some day or other throw off their chains and handcuffs from our hands and feet and their devilish lashes which some of them shall have enough of yet from off our backs End of footnote. do the whites say i being a black man ought to be humble which i readily admit i ask them ought they not to be as humble as i or do they think that they can measure arms with jehovah will not the lord yet humble them or will not these very colored people whom they now treat worse than brutes yet under god humble them low down enough some of the whites are ignorant enough to tell us that we ought to be submissive to them that they may keep their feet on our throats 
and if we do not submit to be beaten to death by them we are bad creatures and of course must be damned etc if any man wishes to hear this doctrine openly preached to us by the american preachers let him go into the southern and western sections of this country i do not speak from hearsay what i have written is what i have seen and heard myself no man may think that my book is made up of conjecture i have travelled and observed nearly the whole of those things myself and what little i did not get by my own observation i received from those among the whites and blacks in whom the greatest confidence may be placed the americans may be as vigilant as they please but they cannot be vigilant enough for the lord neither can they hide themselves where he will not find and bring them out thy presence why withdrawest lord why hidest thou now thy face when dismal times of deep distress call for thy wonted grace the wicked swelled with lawless pride have made the poor their prey oh let them fall by those designs which they for others lay for straight they triumph if success their thriving crimes attend and sordid wretches whom god hates perversely they command to own a power above themselves their haughty pride disdains and therefore in their stubborn mind no thought of god remains oppressive methods they pursue and all their foes they slight because thy judgments unobserved are far above their sight they fondly think their prosperous state shall unmolested be they think their vain design shall thrive from all misfortune free vain and deceitful is their speech with curses filled in lies by which the mischief of their heart they study to disguise near public roads they lie concealed and all their art employ the innocent and poor at once to rifle and destroy not lines crouching in their dens surprise their heedless prey with greater cunning or express more savage rage than they sometimes they act the harmless man and modest looks they wear that so deceive the poor may less their sudden onset fear part two for god they think no notice takes of their unrighteous deeds he never minds the suffering poor nor their oppression heeds but thou o lord at length arise stretch forth thy mighty arm and by the greatness of thy power defend the poor from harm no longer let the wicked vaunt and proudly boasting say tush god regards not what we do he never will repay common prayer book shall i for fear of feeble man the spirit coarse in me restrain or undismayed in deed and word be a true witness of my lord awed by mortals frown shall i conceal the word of god most high how then before thee shall i dare to stand or how thy anger bear shall i to soothe the unholy throng soften the truth or smooth my tongue to gain earth's gilded toys or flee the cross endured my lord by thee what then is he whose scorn i dread whose wrath or hate makes me afraid a man an heir of death a slave to sin a bubble on the wave yea let men rage since thou wilt spread thy shadowing wings around my head since in all pain thy tender love will still my sure refreshment prove wesley's collection end of section eight end of walker's appeal by david walker